the passing begin and the talking end. Erickson is the man. Craig has it. No doubt about it. Detmer, of course. Detmer. Ty Detmer. He's the young gun. The stronger arm. Too quick, too cool. Miami on top. 34-20. Kane. 45 to 3. I'm not giving him nothing. BYU, no doubt. 3 to 0. BYU 42, Miami 3. We'll give him 3. No! Tonight, we have the top-ranked Hurricanes of Miami University invading Provo, Utah to take on the 16th-ranked Cougars of Brigham Young University. In the background, the beauty and serenity of the Wasatch Mountains. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin, and welcome once again to ESPN's primetime coverage of CFA football. I can promise you this. We do not have serenity down on the playing field here because they're looking for a record crowd of over 65,000. In fact, the people at Brigham Young say if they had a stadium that seated over 100,000, they could have sold that many tickets for this one. And why not? You have two premier candidates for the Heisman Trophy this year in Erickson and also Ty Detmer. You have two offenses that were two of the most prolific in all of the 80s in college football. Gary Danielson is with us on the telecast tonight. It's not that Gary is afraid of heights, but he wanted to be closer to a chalkboard to talk about what these two dynamic offenses do. Gary. All right, thanks, Ron. Before I explain these two spread offenses, let me first talk about an old saying that doesn't apply anymore. They used to say, he who has the chalk last wins. First of all, they don't even use chalk. They use these colored pencils. And secondly, it doesn't apply anymore because both of these teams throw the ball by using option football. They just don't run out and cut because the defense might be there. What they do is they spread the field horizontally and, and vertically and let this guy set in zones against zone break against man-to-man, -man. curl in here if he's getting from the outside, cut across. If the linebackers come across, they'll do it over here with the tight end, same routine. And if they bring those linebackers up, they double this guy, they'll bring the tight end or the split receiver across, bring this guy to the post, curl on the outside. They still have problems with man-to-man -man defense. They'll cross these two guys, run this guy to the post, and bring him to that open area. Hey, it doesn't matter who has the chalk last. Every play you call works because you make your adjustments after the snap. So. I know you're saying, now, what does the defense do? They don't have a chance. Well, they got something better than having the chalk last. They got four guys right here. When they come like that, it doesn't make any difference if you're stretching them horizontally or vertically because the big stretch now becomes the horizontal stretch that the quarterback's in. And I've never seen a quarterback yet that can throw lying flat on his back. Ron? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gary. Now let's put a bottom line on it. The two things that these clubs are worried about, first of all, for Brigham Young, and that is the front four, a rugged and very quick front four. BYU has to pass, protect, and do it well tonight. And for Miami, they have not played a ball game. Defensively, they worry about giving up the big play. Tonight's game is brought to you by Northwest Airlines committed to getting you there on time. And by Days End. Days offers great rooms, great value at over 1,000 great locations. There's a Cougar Stadium in Provo, Utah. They look for a record crowd tonight. Coach Erickson paces the sideline knowing this right here. Danger at the top. The last two preseason number one teams have lost their season openers. Florida State in 88, last year Michigan. Carlos Huerta. He is from Coral Gables, very close by. Kicking to number 21, Stacy Corley. And on the far side, number five is Derwin Gray. This is going to be taken at the 15-yard line. Out over the 30 to the 33 is Brad Clark. And now for tonight's starting lineups, brought to you by Die Hard. Ty Detmer out of San Antonio is at quarterback. 
he will have Tui Pelotu and Bellini as his running backs. Nyberg and Boyce are the wide receivers. His tight end, All-American candidate Chris Smith. In the middle of things, Robert Stevens, the center. Baumforth and May are the guards. And at the tackles, Neil Fort and Mike Kine. Movement by Miami. Detmer will take it straight ahead as we see no markers down on the play and he'll take it to the 30 yard line Maurice Crom will have the tackle now defensively Maryland and Caesar the defensive tackles for the hurricane from the 4 3 Shane Curry and Anthony Hamlet the defensive ends Maurice Crom who just made the tackle in the middle Jesse Armstead and Darren Smith on the outside at linebacker in the secondary they're very good Smith and Bailey at the corners and the safeties Darrell Williams and Hurley Brown. Second down and eight. Feels the pressure. Gets it away. Complete across the 40-yard line as Armstead comes over to make the stop. But Bellini out of the backfield. And something you talked to me about yesterday as far as the backs coming out and how BYU would utilize them that we'll see a lot of this tonight. BYU, one of the best in the country at getting their, their running backs out into the secondary in a hurry. On this play, he had to. He had Russell Maryland right in his face. That's what Ty is good at, is getting rid of that ball with someone in his face. Third down. They need just to cross the 43. Short drop. It is complete. Near sideline. Nyberg will have the first down, just shy of midfield. Maurice Crum on the stop. Ty did a nice job there, Ron. Dad, we were off in the secondary. He only needed four yards. He took advantage of it, got it in and out of his hand quick. Just a three-step drop, first down. Nyberg, who is a senior from St. George, Utah, is described as their go-to guy. And he was in the first big third down play of the evening. Almost 4,600 yards for Ty Detmer. Two of two in this one tonight for a total of 14 as Corley comes in at running back. Corley, left side, five, six, seven, down to the 43-yard line of Miami. Bailey from his right cornerback spot up to make the tackle. Absolutely one of the keys to this game is can Brigham Young run the ball just a little bit to keep him my honest. There you see him. He gets him with the snack count, Ty does. Runs a little bit of counter tray back in there. Positive yardage. Very good side for them. Moving the ball on the ground. Gary, this is twice on this opening series that we have seen the defensive front for Miami jump. Obviously, Ty is using a stop and start in his count. Hut, hut, hut. He's good to him. They're wired on defense. Detmer. Goes with the running play to a Pelotu down to the 43 yard line. That's going to be a gain of a half, maybe a yard. And Darren Smith, the sophomore from Miami, comes up to make the play. And now a very big one coming up here for the Cougars. Still in pretty good position here. Third and about three and four. A lot of things he can do. No way that uh, Miami has any idea that he has to throw, has to run. They've got a lot of different options he can call. That'd be nice all night to have three, third, and, third and three and four. about the 40 from the backside hit the ball is fumbled as they scramble for it the Hurricanes say they have it and the officials still waiting to give us a signal Miami football Jesse Armstead is the man who caused the fumble Anthony Hamlet has made the recovery here you go, taking a look at this replay of the of the sack and the fumble. We're zeroing in on Maryland first now. They're going to try to double team him, but this time the back helps, chops his leg. But Armstead from the outside comes in practically untouched, gets tied from behind. They tried to run a little pick play there, but they rolled the zone. Good defensive call by Sonny Lubick. McGuire, the lone setback. He's audible. In. Short drop comes out to the near sideline to Carroll, pushed out of bounds at the 46. The starters on offense tonight for the Miami Hurricanes. Craig Erickson, West Palm Beach, Florida quarterback. He has Stephen McGuire at fullback tonight. His tailback is Wesley Carroll out of Cleveland, Ohio. Trill Hill and Lamar Thomas, the wide receivers. Rob Chudzinski is the tight end. The center, Darren Handy. The guards, Cristobal, that's Lewis Cristobal, and Claude Jones. And the tackles, Sullivan and Searcy. 
two tight ends straight ahead with the play and it looks as though the Hurricanes have picked up the first down and let's take a look at the BYU defense as some extracurricular activity goes on downfield. Mark Smith is the nose guard. Harston and Kafusi are the defensive tackles. Rocky Beagle and Shad Hansen are the linebackers in the inside. Patissimato and Levitt on the outside. The corners, Tony Crutchfield and Brian Mitchell. With the safeties, Josh Arnold and Norman Dixon. Rad crowd. The crowd was reacting a little bit. A couple of the Miami receivers down there throwing in the backfield. They're, they're very aggressive receivers. Not only throwing catching the ball, but mean. throwing blocks down in the secondary. And uh, that's what kind of got everybody's attention. It think, was Thrill Hill, I think yeah, it was. I think Thrill was involved in that. Connolly comes into the ball game, number 28. He was the starter last year. He's out of the Tarpon Springs, Florida. Catches the ball extremely well. But McGuire got the start tonight. That is how extremely close those two fullbacks are. Movement on the line as Smith, Mark Smith, comes across, makes contact. Flags go down. Illegal procedure, Miami. Guy Gibbs, our referee tonight, and he says, mark it against the Hurricanes. Ball start on the offense. Still first down. We're going to take a look here at that false start. You see the lineman there in a two-point stance, but the tight end, let's see which guy moves here. Oh, the left guard makes a move, and even if he's in a two-point stance, if he draws him off, it's still a penalty. Connolly, running play, hit at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one. Shad Hansen steps up to make the hit on him, and with every tackle, this partisan house is roaring here in Provo. Well, that's a big key to the game. If they can keep Miami's running game down to just a, a reasonable 100 yards, if they can both run it and pass it, it's going to be a long night for the Cougars. But if they can keep that punch away from them, then they can concentrate on that offensive passing attack. On second, Erickson hit and sack. Rocky Beagle, the first man to get there back at the 47-yard line. We're going to take a look at this. They confused Craig that time. They came with a blitz off the slot. There you see a beagle coming. A free run. Craig reads it. I don't know really if the defensive, uh, I mean, if the secondary confused him too much or somebody, uh, one of the receivers, didn't break their route because it looked like Craig was ready to throw. But T.C. Mano was 37 right there behind him. Third down. Miami needs the 33 of BYU. Wanted the quick pass, and he will be sacked again. Rich Kapusi. They're playing man-to-man -man defense. They take away the quick throw. Kafusi, their best athlete, comes in and cleans up, but it really was a coverage sack. Paul Snyder in the punt. Matt Bellini is the deep single safety for the Cougars. And they're coming after him off the side of his foot. Not a good one. It will come out of bounds up around the 25-yard line. So both offensive series don't really go anywhere. We're going to take a timeout. No score. College football Saturday. Miami at BYU is brought to you by today's truck, Chevrolet. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just alike. Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson back in Provo, Utah. Great to have you along. The third game of this doubleheader. California won the opener, Virginia the second game, and now Miami and BYU. Detmer complete again, far sideline to Nyberg. Got to be minimal yardage, maybe a gain of three, just shy of the 30 as Roland Smith converged onto him very quickly. But they'll hit you. There's no doubt about that. Those Miami defensive backs will come up. They're going to throw those short passes. They're going to come up and lay some helmet at you every time. 
Ty's going with the short drops, trying to get the ball off, not get that Miami defensive line too charged up with a few sacks. BYU moved the ball in the opening sequence, a couple of first downs into the fumble, and in a great defensive series. How important is that early in the ball game? Well, it gives them their confidence that they're looking for because this is a big team. They're playing somebody that's raked way up there, and they've never played a team that rated this high before. Detmer, lots of time, has it complete. Chris Smith, his tight end. First down, BYU. We've got a pretty passing game right here. We're going to zero in on Chris Smith, the potential All-American right here. He's going to take his inside release. Got man-to-man -man coverage. He gets underneath the linebacker, and Ty puts it right there. It's a way to throw the ball. They had a back cutting underneath there to clear some of that underneath coverage, and Ty laid it right in there. First and 10 is a pass good for 10 yards, and BYU at their own 40-yard line. Bellini, 45 at the 50, and that is another BYU first down. Hurley Brown ran him out of bounds. Great read by Ty Detmer here. You can tell he's taking the short drop. He wants to throw the ball to his wide receiver. They take it away from him. He goes to his second guy in a three-step drop, being able to react that quick is why Ty can throw those numbers week after week up there, those big numbers, because he makes those split sections split set, uh, decisions just without even thinking about it. He's uh, four for four for 33 yards, all of them on a three-step drop. That's on the three-step drop, four of four. Movement in the backfield by Corley. Now the marker comes down, spin move to the outside, and tackled at the 47 by Armstead. But I think it'll come back as Stacy Corley came out of his stage, gave a little stutter step to the right to come back and uh, move a count too soon. Wouldn't have been a penalty, but they already had one man in motion, so two guys in motion is going to grab him. Lavelle Edwards, his 19th year here at Brigham Young University. He's about uh, showed uh, the NCAA how to throw the ball for years around here. You know, kind of an unknown fact. He was a defensive coordinator as an assistant here for years. Still first down. Well, we'll show you what happened on the play. We were watch Corley number 21, top of your screen. He is moving. He is moving laterally, but there's another man in motion, so the two of them moving causes the penalty. Three wide receivers go right this time. Detmer, lots and lots of time. Now it breaks down. Gets it away. Overthrow. Bellini at the 33 is the man he wanted. Bailey was the closest to it. Robert Bailey, a senior from Miami, Florida. He had him open. This is the first one of his seven step drops he's going to take, trying to throw the ball downfield. They're going to try to take those defensive ends and push them out wide. Ty makes the nice spin move, comes out, and those receivers will come across. And he had Bellini open, just threw it a little high. Russell Maryland was number 67 for Miami putting on pressure. Detmer now five of six for 40 yards. Well, that offensive line doing a fine job as he scrambles to the 40 and now the 38 and that is enough for the BYU first down. Crum tackles it. Well, he had the good protection again. Ty's going to take another deep drop. You see him double teaming on the line right there. Steps up into the pocket. Really a coverage type thing. He has to come out. And when everybody's playing man to man, that's when you get those big scrambles for 10, 12 yards because everybody's got their back to the quarterback. Ty, get down, babe. I started to say, <laughs> you can see Bailey coming into the, into the picture, and he has the rep as being one of the really big hitters for the Kings. Rolls the pocket this time, has it complete at the 25 to Bellini. 13 yards. Detmer's just a musician with this, with this football. We're going to take a, a look at Bellini here coming across. It's a bootleg action. He'll fake the action and come outside of the pocket. Bellini comes inside. He's got a man chasing him. And Ty puts his ball in a position where just Mike can catch the ball. Low and away. Boy, he's just a magician coming out of that bag. He throws on the run. He's a little bit short, so they're going to have to get him out of the pocket occasionally to throw, but uh, he throws a lot of balls on the money. You know, guys don't have to stop and jump. But they just puts it right there. 
Bellini is out. Corley comes in along with Salido. Draw play. Salido loses the ball at the 21 yard line. Miami football. Two fumbles, two losses of fumbles. Well, this is a little bit of a high-risk play here. We didn't get to the replay early enough. Ty kind of fakes the pass and hands to him, but he had the football, which just raked across the arm. They're moving the ball, but they're just not making the plays, holding on to it. 6.51 left in this opening quarter, still no score. State that Miami fans especially will be interested in. East Carolina has just kicked a field goal. Ron Imperanto. It is tied at 10 and 10 down in Tallahassee. Seminoles have lost their last two openers. They are in a tough one right now with the Pirates. Let's go back out to Provo. Ron and Gary. Chris, thanks so much. Several surprises in the state of Florida. Uh, the University of Florida winning big over Oklahoma State today. And so far in this ball game, total yardage BYU 77, Miami only four. But the Canes have recovered two Cougar fumbles. McGuire to the 24. Kafusi is the first man to hit it. Now let's go back and look at that fumble just a moment ago. Salido on the draw. Great call here. They had him upfield rush. You see they caught him in a little bit of a blitz, but Byrell comes over and just rakes the ball. Caught him in the one spot. And then Darrell Williams will make Falls the recovery. Up. Two big fumbles. They're moving the ball. I mean, they, they, they got to be elated over there at the BYU side. Though. Two fumbles in Miami territory, the 47-yard line, and now the 21. Complete at the 29. Ball is fumbled. That's no signal whether the play is dead. Yes, they say it is. Randall Hill made the reception. He definitely was down. He had his knee down on that one. I don't know if he... Uh, jammed his finger or hand on the ground right there. Looks like he jammed his arm and the ball popped loose, but he was definitely on the ground in that one. Well, you could see the low-line super there, Gabby Sabatini, the winner of the, the women's finals at the U.S. Open. Tie break in the second set to win it over Grant. McGuire stumbles once, second effort. He has the first down and about nine more out to the 40. They love Steve McGuire. I mean, they're mentioning him in the same breath as Alonzo Highsmith, their past all great All-American fullback. Uh, McGuire scored 10 touchdowns, had their all-time freshman record last year, rushed for 546 yards. He gets some big yards for him all the time. He's got 16 yards on three carries tonight as Alex Johnson that comes in to replace him. McGuire, pretty good size at 5'11", 220 pounds. <laughs> Misdirection, bringing the guards, breaks it open, and lots of running room for Johnson. Cuts it back, and he's down to the 21-yard line. Brian Mitchell saved possibly a touchdown. <laughs> Johnson, the speedster. Here you see a little counter tray action. The two big guys from the outside pulling. Alex gets the big hole and he just explodes through there. Brian Mitchell, fastest guy in the BYU team, comes back and saves a touchdown because he's probably the only guy in the field that could have caught him. And the point you made earlier, the Miami wideouts love to block downfield. You could see it on that play. McGuire back in the game. No hold at left tackle. Slides to the outside, and he's going to have six yards. Rocky Beagle from his inside linebacking position comes over defensively. But now the Kings moving the football far more convincingly than earlier in this first quarter. Well, that's Lavelle Edwards' big fear, is that they're going to just ram it down their throat with the running game. Everybody talks about Eric Erickson. Dennis in Miami ran the ball about 52% of the time last year. Well, particularly toward uh, the end of the year, Miami ran the ball very well. And Dennis Erickson says they, they want to continue that this year. Swings it out to Conley. 
he turned an ankle or something as he goes down at the 13 yard line and let's see if he gets up OK. Brian Mitchell on the stop and it looked as though he twisted a knee or an ankle as he tried to make the cut. It was a screen play and either Dennis got the ball out there a little too early or the lineman stayed in a little too long. Conley look at he's got no help out here. He's going to have to look for these big guys coming in and yes he does he's, slip on the turf slip rather than turning the knee. And of course that was a big uh, uh, point of interest yesterday was the length of the grass out there yesterday. All the Miami guys like that fast track. Spencer and McGuire the setbacks on a third down. Miami needs just outside the 10. McGuire up the middle first and goal Kings. Mark seven, Smith defensively. Seven. They're going to spot it just outside the seven yard line of BYU. Five carries now for 27 for McGuire. Well, Cristobal, Handy, and Jones, the left guard, center, and right guard, just are, are, are creating a hole for, for all the running backs, to, especially McGuire, to pound up in there. This is the spot on the field where Erickson has been very good at getting his team in the end zone. McGuire, right side, he'll score. It's the same play that Alex Johnson just broke for 40 yards. This time McGuire is going to run a little counter tray action. The two big guys, the guard and the tackle are pulling. They're going to just pound it up in there. Just overpowering the BYU guys on that. A seven yard walk in. 79 Mike Sullivan with the paving block as Carlos Huerta. Look at the length of the grass. Huerta worked overtime yesterday. And in fact he said he was a little concerned about his kicking but he knocks that one home. Flag in the play. So we'll hold it right here for just a second. 307 left in this opening period. What did uh, he say? He's like uh, hitting it out of the rough, huh? Is that what he said? <laughs> Illegal procedure against Miami. Going to have to do this one again. Where to work yesterday after a very little. We have illegal procedure on the offense. Well, the special teams obviously don't realize that they need to be back out there. And now they're being beckoned from the bench. There's Huerta. But what he was talking about, this is a very lush and beautiful field. But they leave it just a tad high. And uh, because of no tee in the colleges since last year, Huerta said that when the ball goes on the ground, that there is grass between his foot and the ball. And he said it's like hitting out of the rough. And he said some are going left, some are going right. They're not all going straight. Well, he's, uh, he has never missed an extra point. So he, what does he have in a row here? Uh, 91 or something in a row, extra points. And uh, he doesn't want to ruin it with a uh, kind of a knuckleball out of the high grass. Well, he's going to get to do it again, this time from back at the 15-yard line. And if he hits it, it would be 92 straight. Seven Miami kicking records. And as we told you just a moment ago at kickoff, he comes from very close by Coral Gables. He was funny talking about it, though, wasn't he? He had a pretty good. He sense has a great humor. sense of humor. He, uh, in fact, is a pre-law major, a 3-3-1 GPA, academic All-American last year. Well, he gets a lot of practice behind this offense that he's with. Boy, scored over 1,200 points in the last three years. He's been a part of some of that. Well, the penalty makes no difference to Huerta as he gets that one. 307 left opening period. It's the Kings 7 to nothing. Well, mark it down for tomorrow. We simply like to call it the first and last word for you on football Sundays. NFL game day, new time. Remember at 12 p.m. Eastern time, and then we wrap it up at 7 tomorrow evening. With our award-winning crew, NFL Game Day and NFL Primetime tomorrow right here on ESPN. I can guarantee you playing pro ball. We used to run home to watch that show, find out what everybody did around the league. We used to watch Chris and Tom and all the guys get all the highlights. Where to kickoff? This is going to go to Gray. Five yards deep. He will not return. And the Cougars will take it out at the 20-yard line. And now a marker from deep downfield at the 30-yard line after the play had been touched dead. That flag came from the near side. It was thrown into the middle of the field at the 30.
personal foul Brigham Young. Well, 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 you know, Miami usually gets all the press about being the, the, the rough guys and getting all the personal fouls, and the first one to, to draw blood, so to speak, has been BYU tonight. Yeah, but LaBelle was not very pleased with their opening game last right. week when uh, they had a, a rough start against UTEP as far as the penalties are concerned. This will take it back to the 10-yard line. So the personal foul pushes it back to the 10 and understand one thing. BYU is not like your normal football team. It doesn't matter that they're on their own 10 yard line. They will throw as quickly here as they will at the Miami 10. Right here. No doubt about it. He said that they don't even know down in distance or field position. They just call plays. Goes with a running play though to Corley. Quick pursuit. Barrel hit him first. And then he is knocked out of bounds across the way. Let's go to Chris Fowler for this update on what's going on in college football today, Chris. Okay, fellas, Florida State has awakened. 80-yard drive capped right here as Edgar Bennett draws in the Brad Johnson pass 17 to 10. Now the Seminoles jump in front of East Carolina midway in the second quarter. Pair of touchdowns for Mr. Johnson. Back now to Provo. Thanks, Chris. Bennett picking up where he left off last year. He did a really good job, particularly at the end of the year. Big running back for Florida State. Detmer pauses over the middle, incomplete, and he had him open. Tui Pelotu. And in going after the football, he took a shot at the 35. And looked over at the bench, and he'll come back to the huddle now. He's okay. My, Miami is sitting in a deep, too deep zone. Two free safeties are playing half the field, and they're going to read Ty's eyes. He looks right, he looks him off, and he delivers it. With a guy in his face a little high again. That's with that pressure up the middle. Whoa! That's why the fullback would rather block than catch passes. You know, I mean, it's a lot. Charles Farms, <laughs> who played a lot last year, is listed as a backup. And again, shows the strength of that secondary with Hurley Brown and Darrell Williams. That Farms is good enough to play for many colleges. Detmer, lots and lots of time. Wanted to dump it off. Now, open over the middle, has his tight end, Chris Smith. And that's enough for the first down. This is an absolute bravo play by Ty Detmer here. I mean, he really he, sees the field well. He, he buys time. He's already got the Miami defensive lineman slowing down and ready for him to scramble. There you can see Caesar right there. But he can't keep up with Ty right here as he scrambles. And he, as he scrambles, he keeps looking downfield. He finds his All-American tight end, takes a little hit. But for a 20-yard gain, you'll take those all night, even if you're only 6 foot 107. Good for 24 and throwing across the body that way. Is pretty tough. Proved he has something on the ball. Can throw it. Short drop. Near sideline. Valdez pushed out of bounds close to the 40-yard line. It's a gain of almost five. As far as he was a busy man of this series, makes the play defensively. We talked to Roger French. He spoke really highly of Nate Valdez. There you see Ty. Eight for 10, 81 yards. Valdez, they feel, is going to be the star of the future for him. Just a sophomore. They got a guy that can catch the ball. That's what's important. They got a guy that can put the ball there, too. Well, Valdez is also out of the state of Texas, as is Detmer. Miami's moved up their secondary here. See if they come a little bit. Valdez is out of Mission, Texas. Here comes the blitz. Corley going to be knocked down. It's Barrow, who steps across the line of scrimmage and makes the hit on him. Well, Ty recognized the secondary was up there. He called an audible. The, the secondary was completely different look for him. He knew the blitz was coming. He elected to go with the running play there, and the penetration was too much. Kind of blew it up before it got started. You know, Barrow has played the last two series, and we just stood up to check down on the bench. Armstead is okay, just that Miami, because of the depth, given some starters breathers early on in the game. And I think Barrow might be a little better in pass coverage with the zone than Jesse. Jesse's a better pass rush guy. Barrow coming on the blitz from that left side. Pass in and out of the hands at the 45-yard line. Matt Suzuki was open, and he dropped it. 
take a look at the secondary from a little bit higher up right now. You're going to see the deep double zone. The two, seat, two safeties back up. The linebackers are reading his eyes. Watch the middle linebacker. He, Ty looks him off but delivers it just a tad behind Let me receiver. apologize. It was Nyberg who dropped the ball. Not Nyberg, one he usually catches. Kaufman, who does the place kicking, the kicking off, and the punting. Line drive. Carroll. Passes the 30 to the 35. 42 yards on the kick and 14 on the return. One of the reasons Miami able to make a very decent return out of it was because the kick was line drive rather than high and good coverage. The goal of a punt return team is always to try to pick up at least one first down. They want to get at least 10 yards, and that really helps the drive. I mean, it makes it a 65-yard drive now instead of a, an 80-yard drive. A big advantage to get those 14 yards. Under a minute left, first period, 7 to nothing, Miami. Going to go long, and he had him wide open. Over the middle, Lamar Thomas looked like the first guy out to the workout, and Erickson didn't pick him up. Oh, my goodness. Blown coverage in the secondary by BYU. In, in Craig's defense a little bit, the play is read a certain way. It's going to be a play-action pass, and he did have Kafusi right in his face right here. So Ty's going to go to his first guy. If he's open, he can't look for the second guy that's open, so he had to get rid of the ball. But there's no doubt Lamar Thomas in the press box will see that was wide open going down the middle. Look for that one later. at the 27. Rick Wilson got to him first as the secondary for BYU just covered the Miami receivers like a blanket. It's a loss of 13. Here you see he's got no backs this time. He's reading hot and he doesn't. Wesley Carroll comes open a little too late and Rick Wilson with the sack. He's the strongest guy on the football team. He's reading hot. You need to explain for those. He had who no, no backs in the backfield so he has to assume that when one linebacker comes he has to know who to dump the ball off. That time he backed out Wesley Carroll was his hot receiver. Chudzinski drops it at the 35, and it's fourth down, Miami. <laughs> Delay a game against Miami, so they will get another chance at it. Miami's really been struggling throwing the ball. They've been able to run the ball so far, but they've really struggled. BYU is mixing up their coverages, coming with the blitz, and their front three has put some pressure on. So it's not a penalty that uh, BYU can decline. One second will go back on the clock. One second left in this opening quarter. And you get a third down with the five-yard penalty. The ball has been pushed back to the 23, and to get the first down, the Canes have to go out to their own 45. Well, it's not like they've never had to, to call a play like this. I'm thinking back to last year when they hit the uh, third and uh, 41 against Notre Dame to actually turn the game upside down. Let's see if they send all four receivers up the hashes and outside and see if they can play off that middle safety and throw the ball. Whistle and the play is dead. Now, the 25 second clock is back to 25. The clock was whistled in with only one second, undoubtedly. Erickson thought that the clock would not start. It's that the really, play would be finished. Really. So that is the end of the first quarter. Let's take a timeout. Miami 7, BYU nothing. Seven to nothing as we begin the second quarter. Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson. So a delay of game penalty. Clock showed one second left. 
And we are checking. Obviously, I was wrong, but I thought the clock did not start until the ball was snapped. Well, we haven't determined if you're wrong or not yet. We're sure I know. Erickson incomplete. Randall Hill was the man that the pass was intended for. And let's go once again to Chris Fowler. Okay, fellas, the points are coming fast and furious now for Florida State at home against East Carolina. Terrell Buckley takes the punt back 63 yards for the touchdown, just like prime time used to do it. So Florida State was tied 10-10 a minute ago. They now lead 24-10 of the second quarter, Ron and Gary. Schneider. 28 yards in his first kick. This is a hanging spiral that Bellini will take under pressure. Gets by the first man, and then he is swarmed at the 40. Kick of 37. It loses one on the return. 7 to nothing. our score, and the storyline in this one so far. BYU two fumbles in Miami territory. Johnson with the 40-yard run of the touchdown drive that came up really big. Detmer 8 of 11 at 82 yards and rushing. Miami 61, BYU 23. The two fumbles and the 61 yards uh, rushing by Miami are bad elements so far for BYU. across midfield at the 49 Roland Smith defensively well, Detmer all night is going to take that throw if they give it to him Miami starting to play a little bit of man to man defense that's the big question here will Miami be patient enough to sit in those zones they're not used to having the team move the ball up and down the field like this and these guys get a little frustrated having somebody just pick and pick and pick and pick because that's what they'll do if they let them they're going to have to move up if they play man to man defense Short drop. Bellini, you saw him in motion. They got the isolation on Farms. Breaks it across the 38. Good for the first down at the 35. It's just a little bit too easy. They put the man in the motion. They the disguises come off. They know it's man to man. Ty just drips it out there. Notice how he throws and the guy catches the ball on the run all the time. That's the side sign of a good quarterback. He's throwing that ball where they can catch it and gain some more yards. And that's an extremely tough cover. You can see farms have to come all the way across the field. Oh yeah, you can't you you can't come up on that. If they have that play on, if the quarterback's good enough to read it like that, that you just got to give them that throw. That's why it's tough to play man-to-man -man coverage with your safeties. Denver has it complete again. This time, Boyce gang tackled Smith, the first man out there, number 16, to make the hit. These short passes run accomplish another thing for the BYU offense. It tires out that Miami defensive line. You can see those guys, Russell Maryland, Caesar, Hamlet, Curry. They want sacks. They want to get in there. And they're going to they're go through all that work. They're grunting. They're trying to put their spin move. They look up, and Ty's already got rid of the ball. It's only four or five yards, but it's a long game. You've got to rush that passer all night. Robbie Bosco, former great here at BYU, now an assistant coach. Detmer got by Maryland, got by Caesar, and then finally tackled down around the 31-yard line. It looks like Maryland is the man who wound up wrapping him up. Russell Maryland, the uh, outland and Lombardi candidate. Uh, I think he's going to go in the top one, two, three in the draft this year. One of the best defensive linemen with feet, and he can run, and he's an effort guy on every play. Just a heck of a football player. He can play for my team or anybody else's. 6'2", 273 pounds, and they say he runs a 4'8", 40. I believe it. Deeper drop by Detmer, and he nails him at the 18-yard line. First and 10, BYU. Bellini for 14 yards. They're checking, I believe, it's five receptions for Bellini. Five for 57 yards. Matt Bellini, the brother of Mark Bellini, who plays for Seattle. We're going to go uh, no huddle offense here. Calling it at the line. He can dial any play, we were told yesterday. From the line. Bellini this time on the run. 
three yards, now four to the 14. There is no doubt that that uh, Miami defensive line is sucking a little wind. They're going to have to substitute some guys. In fact, they are right now. They're bringing in a couple of substitutes because it's just too hard to rush the pass or play after play after play like that. Eric Miller, number 95, a junior from Palm Beach Gardens, checks in the defensive line. Detmer out of harm's way once, now twice, now three touchdowns. Has the man open. Bellini. yards on the pass play and Detmer avoided three different sacks and then threw it to Bellini. Kaufman to attempt the extra point. We're tied but before we go away let's take a couple of looks at it. There you see Ty in the pocket. He's looking, he's looking. He tries to pull it down a couple times. He's got nobody. Then he starts playing some magic routines here. Spins, comes up, dips to the outside. Then he sees Bellini in the end zone. It's a, just a little pitch and catch. Bellini seems to find that open area every time. Ty with the jump. Boy, that was Heisman material all over right there. 12 minutes, 44 seconds left until halftime. We're tied. Football Saturday, Miami at BYU is brought to you by Isuzu. For features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. One of many ties in the stands. <laughs> you see they're wearing the little ties. They were asked to bring different ties. In fact, we're going to show you some video in just a bit. There's a big Y up on the side of the mountain that overlooks this campus at Brigham Young. And last night, some youngsters crawled up there, and when I say crawl, they had to go a pretty good distance. Yeah, hiked, and, hiked and, might be the word. And right. put a T up there to make it tie rather than the Y. That's what it looks like right now. Well, last night, they put a T just above that, and the police made them go up there and take it down. There you see it. There you see it. <laughs> and folks, we're not talking about a couple of hundred feet. <laughs> we're talking a long way. <laughs> Kaufman to kick it off. Johnson and Hill in the deep end, and this crowd is once again aroused. Wow. Five yards out of the end zone. Speaking of aroused, was high <laughs> aroused. Watch him after the touchdown. Boy, he's such a quiet, unassuming guy when you meet him, a yes sir guy, but boy, he is as competitive as anybody I've seen on the football field. And he gets into it. He chases him up the ramp. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, that's fun. I'll tell you. You play, you, you know, you read about Miami, watch him on TV, and then you get to show that you can do it too. Everybody, get into it. Both of these athlete. quarterbacks extremely unassuming, particularly as far as the high school race. Oh, yeah. Is they, they've concerned. got their head on their shoulders about that stuff. They want to win football games. McGuire, maybe one. Patissimato coming outside to knock him down hard. Patisi Manu, number 37 here, is the only player remaining from their 84 national championship team. How could he be still on this team? Took a little missionary work, come back, plays off the blocker, and wraps him up, throws McGuire down, and the number one side. Seen that around. I'm sure we'll see a few more of those tonight also. Western Samoa. Total yards from BYU now at 165. Erickson over the middle, almost intercepted, and I believe Wesley Carroll has come away with the catch. He has. Wow, that's a great effort. He was surrounded in blue. I'll tell you, we talked about Miami's rush all night, but it's been B BYU's rush on Erickson that's had trouble. He had no room to step up in there, made a good throw, and Carroll with a great catch. Watch, you see it. It's tough to throw, and you can't step into it like that. That was Kafusi number 59. Carroll now with two catches for 15. Third down, Miami needs the 30. 
McGuire, he's not going to have it. Rick Wilson. <laughs> wow. That got their attention. Snyder again to punt. Bellini, no spiral on this one. No fair catch. And he's going to be whistled down. They're going to say at the 32-yard line, and now a marker comes into the pile. Well, the reason for the marker, then, if he did signal for the fair catch, will be a delay of game five yards for advancing the football. Matt was upset with himself. Delay of game on the receivers. Let's see if we can see it here. He comes up. He's thinking about the fair catch. That's all you got to do, though, because the Much defense is going to... what happened last week That's in the right. Nebraska game. Once you just lift the arm, you can't Ooh. deceive the cover team. And, if, and the people that... Are, that are upset about it are those cover the guys that were getting knocked all over the field. Uh, I guess you take a uh, paste in the mouth and it's for a fair catch. That's not too much fun. I'll tell you, Matt Bellini hasn't made too many mistakes though tonight. He uh, passed Todd Christensen on a second all-time list now for receiving for BYU. Phil Odell, former Detroit Lion, is up there. There's 183 catches. Matt's. Well, oh, that defense for that BYU. Yeah. Hey, breath comes a little easier. Smiles come a little easier when things have been going the way they have for them. The Miami defense has not been able to slow down Ty yet. 10:49 left until halftime. Tie ball game at seven. Put it on the hip, and now we'll pick up four, maybe five yards, and let's go to Chris Fowler for still another update. Chris. Fellas, in Tallahassee, Neon Dion is back. His name is Dion Johnson, and he plays for East Carolina, and he busted in from three yards out, and the Pirates won't go away. Seminoles up 24-17. The game has reached halftime. Back to Provo. Thanks, Chris. We'll be going back to Chris and Lee Corso at halftime of this ball game to update you on today's happening this Saturday number two in college football. Draw play to a Pelotu. Up around the 39 and he's going to miss the first down by still about three yards. Ty so far has had a hot hand. Here we've broken down his passing distances. What I mean by this is less than nine yards. He's eight for eight. That's where he's thrown the ball, 75 yards. They catch it and run a little bit. Middle is 10 to 19, and long is more than 19 yards. BYU looking at a blitz situation. They needed the 42. Open and complete his point. All the way to the 32-yard line of Miami. Well, we talked about the different passes. They come with the blitz. Miami does this time. Ty hangs in there as long as he can, then lays it to the outside, goes on his butt, but he knows he's got that big first long completion. He hung and he hung and he put it out there even before Boyce made the break. And that's how you get the big plays. Miami has to have the patience to stay in the zone. They cannot match up man to man. Just inside the 30, that's Michael Barrow, a junior from Homestead, Florida, who bumped him out of bounds. 9.54 left first half from Provo. And if you have just joined us, it is BYU 7 and Miami 7. The Canes went on top first. And now BYU, in fact, BYU moved the football in their opening two drives only to fumble twice and lose them both in Miami territory. One on the sack and one on the drop play. 
167 yards already. He's got the blitz. Gets it away and has Smith this tight end at the 10. Miami is just making it too easy on Ty. He's the son of a football coach. He's been reading blitzes and coverages his whole life. We're going to watch him right here. He reads the blitz. He's going to audible. He knows what he's got. He knows he's got man-to-man. -man. He hangs as long as he can, and he throws it right into the rush. Eric Miller just lays it to him. Look at him spin around for the completion. He knew he had a chance. So let's take a timeout. BYU 7, Miami 7, and the Cougars threatening. We'll be right back. Well, this packed house is loving it because the Cougars are moving the football and moving it well. They have a first and goal just inside the Miami 10-yard line, and we are tied at seven. Well, we read about Darrell Williams, uh, the free safety for Miami, saying that uh, let's find if Ty is for real. I think they believe that uh, Ty is for real right now because uh, he's putting on a show. Sixth play of the drive. Side pressure. Just overthrown Valdez was the intended receiver. Darrell Williams, the man that Gary was just talking about, was the man who had the cover, and it was Eric Miller again, number 95, who had come into the ballgame on the last series, again putting pressure on Deppler. Well, they brought everybody but uh, Dennis Erickson that time, and Ty threw it to the right guy, but he threw it a little long and didn't get completion. He's going to line it up, tee it up again. Pressure from everywhere, almost intercepted. Nyberg, the intended receiver. Miami looked as though they had at least eight, Gary, if not nine coming. There you see the Miami front. They're using the bear look now. They got eight guys coming, other guys playing man-to-man. -man. BYU crossing their receivers, trying to pick a little bit, trying to get the cheap touchdown. Right call, still good coverage in the secondary. Now it's third down. Third down and goal, nine and a half yards away. Detmer caught from behind. That's Eric Miller again. Boy, what a job he has done, and Barrow, number 56, was right alongside. Well, they tried to roll away from the rush that time, but one of the things the Bear defense does is they rush from the outside, and they keep you in the pocket. It's very difficult to get outside against that Bear defense because those two wide guys are crashing from the outside. Kaufman attempting the field goal, an attempt of 31 yards. Boyce, the holder. You can tell from the reaction of this home crowd, he breaks the tie. With 8-19 left until halftime, it is BYU 10 and Miami 7. U.S. Army student athlete of the game is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And our student of the game is Pete Harston of Brigham Young. He's a graduate student majoring in sociology with a GPA of 3.3. Pete Harston of Brigham Young, our student of the game. As we look at the Miami defense, Ty Detmer, we understand that, that on the other side of the field, they are working on Detmer's chin. No doubt, this one happened when he threw the deep corner route to Chris Smith on the blitz, and he got it right underneath the chin. Looks like he's going to catch a couple stitches there. There you see the deep hits. They want to rush that passer. The only way they've gotten pressure on Ty so far is to bring linebackers, and that's dangerous against this guy. He puts the ball on the mark just too many times. Hill and Johnson, the two deep men for Miami. Last time, Kaufman kicked it all the way out of the end zone, and he will do so again. A 
and now a late flag across the way. And by the reaction of the crowd, well, we'll wait and see. A cheer went up rather than an ooze. <laughs> and we'll see if it is, in fact, against Miami. Here's a good hint, huh? Yeah. Well, as usual in these cases, it's usually the second guy that gets caught. Let's see what happens here. A couple big hits. Remember, this ball has gone out of the end zone. He pushes it back, hits well, him into the head, and then he points. Hits. That's always what you do. You can't hit him in the head with that. You're going to get called every time. Good call. Well, this is a duplication of what happened to the Cougars early on in the ball game as they One suffered piece. a personal foul on the kickoff. Let's see if Craig can get it going. They have not had a first down passing the ball yet in this game. Miami, four first downs all on the ground. McGuire wrapped up after a gain of one. Fatishi Mano has been all over the field. He is as tough as his name is to pronounce. <laughs> Fatishi Manu. Everybody will learn it, though, tonight because he is all over the field making tackles. He's the emotional leader of this football team. He was part of a national championship team, as we mentioned before, and the guy is ready and geared up to play. Alex Johnson checks in for Miami. Number 21, he's the speedster. The lone setback. Johnson gets by one tackler, will not get by the second, as he is going to be knocked down by Norman Dixon. And they will spot the ball just shy of the 15-yard line. It will be third down Miami, and they need the 30 for the first. Gary, I suggest to you that Miami needs to get the crowd out of this game, and they're not doing it right now. Here you see it, where they're trying to run the ball to do it. Jared Levin, now he's a nice job. He gets blocked here, 56, on the right side of your screen, but he turns the play in back to where his help is. He does his job, even if he doesn't make the tackle. An important point for, for a linebacker to do. Erickson, incomplete peril. The intended receiver at the 19 and listen to this crowd. BYU came with their nickel package that time and blitzed again. Duran Gray is coming off the slot, made Craig throw hot, and he didn't do it accurately enough. Snyder waiting at the one, barely got it away. Not a spiral, but Bellini back at the 46, and he gets clobbered as soon as he catches the football by Darren Smith. Boy, Bellini just simply does not want to call for a fair catch unless he has to. Well, it's the St. Louis Cardinals against the Chicago Cubs tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time. On Sunday Night Baseball, two of baseball's top hitters, Ryan Sandberg and Andre Dawson, leading the Cubs against the Cardinals. 8 o'clock tomorrow night, Eastern Time, right here on ESPN. Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson from Provo, Utah. It is BYU 10 and Miami 7. Three-step drop, incomplete, and now intercepted. Maurice Crum with the football that had been deflected still on his feet at midfield. The third turnover of the ball game by the BYU Cougars and the Miami Hurricanes with a big break, making it for themselves on defense. Ty tries to stick it in a real tight right here. He's in between a couple linebackers. Three-step drop, puts it there, but it's bobbled in Maurice Crum. He's always around the ball, making tackles. The leading tackler the last two years, Mo. They call him Mo now. Mo does bow. He makes the catch here. He goes, and he won't go down. This guy might be playing some fullback next week. Big turnover, 50-yard line. Let's see if Craig can crank him up now. They need some yardage. Fumbled the ball as he ran into his own guard, and BYU football. <laughs> Norman Dixon on the recovery, and the pulling guard collided with Erickson. 
no doubt about it here. You see Craig take the handoff, and he doesn't really get the snap cleanly. That's what happened on the play. It was bobbled from the get-go. It looked like the guard knocked it from him, but then it's a mad dash, and first turnover. Boy, back-to-back. -back. Let's go the other way. Watch it. On the ground, play? then the lineman kicks, kicks it. it. Which usually happens, and then you got to go chase for it. Fake the run, Maryland, and he gets oh. it away to Boyd. That's oh a gain gosh. of two, but I'll tell you what, it should go on every highlight film that they have. Oh, my That's gosh. incredible. I'll tell you what, I, there's a lot of people voting right now. Russell Maryland had him in the grass. Not only did he get away, he threw its sidearm falling away. You know what's so inspiring right here? When you got a guy that weighs about 160, 170 pounds out there doing this against some of the best players in college football, that's just so infectious to the rest of your teammate. You're 260, you're saying, hey, if he can do it, I can do it. Here comes the blitz again. They're coming after him. Detmer over the middle, single coverage, incomplete, and a marker. Charles Farms is flagged for interference. Chris Smith was the intended receiver. All right, they're just making it too easy on Ty. You can sit up here and tell a blitz every time. Farms, a free safety, isolated on Smith, the All-American. Not a great route. He puts it up there, but Farms jumps. He gets him in the back. They're going to call that every time. Very tough when you put those free safeties man to man. There you see it again, definitely got him. Got him with the body, as they say. Boyce and Matsuzaki, the wide receivers. Throwback screen. Salido fumbles the ball and he is knocked down for a loss. His Armstead. Wow. <laughs> he came through the blockers, and if he's not there, there was a lot of blue on the far side of the field. It's a sprint action. All of the back just kind of hides behind the line of scrimmage, and they throw back. But Eric Miller again. He didn't start in the ball game. Hamlet did, but we've called his name. It was Miller, 95, who rushed the throw to Salido. Well, uh, Ty had him in his face, but that's the one guy they're not going to block. They're let it go. let him go free. Jesse Armstead stayed at home and made the play. It could play by Jesse. Valdez, the man he was looking for at the 35. Russell Maryland, that time, pressuring the passer. You see Maryland here that's going to come around on a stunt to the outside. He's going to chase, and believe me, I can't tell you how frustrating it is for these big guys to run all that way and not get a sack. In fact, it's so frustrating, he's going to come off the field. He's sucking wind big time. Ty, he almost gets a completion there by not completing the ball because he avoids the big 10-yard sack. Bellini and Salido in the backfield for BYU. He's going to audible here. Pass incomplete, and Detmer got rocked. Matt Suzaki, the intended receiver, and I believe it's Barrow, it was, who came through and really lowered the boom on Detmer. Watch him. Here you see it, the all-out blitz, the only way they've been able to stop him passing. The zones don't help. They're going to come out with the blitz on him. He waits as long as he can, catches one in the face again. Oh, that's a long night, I'll tell you. 170 pounds, this guy's looking right at you in your face after you do that. Probably talking to you, too. Field goal attempt of 54 yards by Kaufman. Does not have the distance. And to the right. 531 left until halftime. BYU still leads 10-7. And let's go back to Chris Fowler. Chris. Fellows Forrest Greg's rebuilding program in Dallas is moving along nicely. Mike Romo of SMU connects on his second touchdown pass of the night. And the ponies have a 14-0 lead over Vanderbilt. Heavy rain now in Dallas. Let's go back to Provo. So the Ponies trying to get back on track. Uh, last year, their first season back from the death penalty. <laughs> and tonight, going in front of Vanderbilt, 14 to nothing. Conley will not be able 
to turn the corner as Jared Lemon, number 56, was right there to push him out of bounds. He is from Soda Springs, Idaho. Jared Lemon, number 56. Jared again plays off the blocker and just strings him out and makes the tackle himself. He's got a couple of big plays. Do you see him? Soda Springs. Come on, Craig. Gear it up, baby. Quick outs incomplete. Looking for Randall Hill, but Kafusi, you can see number 59 come across with his hands up and obscuring the vision of Erickson. Good point, and that really is why the throw went high, because he couldn't follow through with the throw. The ball sails a little bit. It was an audible. They were playing off. BYU. You'll see it right here. Kafusi's in on the throw, gets his hands in the throw, and throws it a little bit higher than he wanted to. Just couldn't follow through. three of third down conversions. Erickson ball is tipped incomplete. They will have to punt again. That's Pete Harston, our athlete of the game, and this crowd standing. Snyder to punt again, and let's see if Bellini for six, the fair catch, because Miami has done a good job of downfield coverage. This time he does because of a very long spiral to the 17. 48 yards in the punt by Snyder. This is going to be one of the worst field positions that BYU will have had all night. The only other one I can think of was that scrimmage from the 10 following the personal foul on the kickoff. There you see Ty. He's got to get it going a little bit. Uh, he, believe me, he's going to step up to the competition just like Ty has right now. He's as tough as they come. He wants to win football games. He struggled a little bit. Hasn't been all his fault right now, but Craig has got to get it going, and he's got to get his rhythm out there. So far, Ty Detmer, 17 for 25, 182, and he's got plenty of yards to roll up some more. Look-in pass complete to Boyce. Bailey had the grabbing, but Detmer took it, took maybe a half step and just unloaded it. Well, what happens here is no one covers him. They have a little eye contact between each other. Comes off the ball, look at he delivers it to him. Look at he even breaks his route. There's a guy standing right behind him, and Boyce just won't go down. 20 yards. Boyce, four catches already, 54 yards on the night. Total yards, first quarter, BYU 105, second quarter, 126. Only 11 for the Canes in the second period. Salido. Check it, 32 rather than 22, Tui Pelotu. And he is close to another first down. However, they're going to mark it at the 44, so he'll miss it by a yard and a half. But BYU has really got Dennis Erickson's defense confused, and you could tell by that expression, they do. Here you see the quick draw. This is one of the plays that defensive coordinator Sudden Lubick said they had to stop, was to draw a trap that BYU has run for years here. Tuipaluto gets in the secondary, makes a miss. Second short. Everybody likes to throw the ball here. Let's see what they do. They keep it on the ground, and they will pick up the first down. Tuipaluto. Called out again. He is a junior from San Mateo, California. Russell Maryland wraps him up, but the chains will move down on the far side with 4.03 left until halftime. We'll take a quick look at Russell Maryland, the All American candidate from the University of Miami. Comes across, cuts across his man's head, and makes the tackle right here. Look at push him down. Look at those feet. Guy weighs 290 and cuts across on one foot to make the tackle. Great play. Great play. Detmer looking for Boyce, just overthrown at the 30. Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson, great to have you along on this beautiful Saturday in Provo, Utah. The third game of our triple header today. California won the opener today, winning over Wisconsin. In the second game, it was Virginia and winning big. And I'm sure that party is going strong in Charlottesville right now. 
And in our game, it is BYU 10 to 7 with 3.47 left until halftime. Nyberg. Ball is knocked loose. Free ball at the 45, and Miami will make the recovery. That is the fourth BYU turnover in this half. Curly Brown, I believe, yes, made the recovery. As Nyberg was close to being down, but undoubtedly, the officials thought he had not gone with his knee to the turf. Here you see Nyberg right here. He's going to come off a couple steps. This is how they're picking up those short yardage plays. He's just stepping back, throwing it, trying to pick up four or five yards. Comes out, tackle. Is he down? Oh, he's down. Oh, he's down. He is definitely down right there. You can see the referee right there. He came up with the whistle in his, in his mouth. It looked for sure like he was going to blow see? the whistle. His knee goes down. Bad break there. Erickson, far side, complete. That's Lamar Thomas, the first catch for him in the night, just short of the first down at the 34. Tony Crutchfield is out there defensively. BYU got a scare Thursday afternoon. Crutchfield, who is the starter at left corner and one of their best athletes on the field defensively, injured a knee, and he also has an arthritic condition. Let's look at it one more yeah, his, time. Yeah, his knee is down as we look at that replay one more time. Anyway, Crutchfield also has an arthritic condition. Went down in practice, but he is okay and starting tonight. Johnson right up the middle. Down close to the 26-yard line is Rocky Beagle. The left inside linebacker for BYU is there to put the stop on him, and that's enough for the Canes first down. previous pass out to Lamar Thomas is what Craig is going to have to do. They're playing man-to-man -man coverage out in the corners and trying to confuse him on all those slots and little option passes. He's going to have to throw the ball outside. McGuire to the right side. Gets by one tackler and then Dixon, one of the first men up along with Jared Levitt. Outstanding play by Jared Levitt again. He's got a guy right in his face. He squeezes it down, and that's what caused it. There you see Shad Hansen, number 50. He reads the play, reads the counteraction, keeps him low, sheds off a blocker, and pushes him back. Push him back. Don't let him fall forward. That's the way to do it. 10-7, BYU leads. Clock now at 2.39 and counting until halftime. Miami with a second and nine. Erickson has Thomas on the near sideline. Inside the five and knocked out of bounds at the four. First and goal, Miami. That's really what they have to do. They're playing man to man out there. He has to throw to the ball of the wing. It's the toughest throw, but he's going to get the most out of it right now. You see, Craig recognizes the defense. He comes back, delivers it, follows through, puts it right on the money. Nice juke right there up the sideline. Almost gets to the end zone. That's the longest completion by Erickson tonight. Good for 20 yards. They go with McGuire to the two. Levitt again defensively. Clock still not a factor. In fact, Miami, I'm sure, would love to do two things. Get it in the end zone and also just use it all the way up if they could. Excellent point. Because if you give Ty back the ball with uh, you know a minute and a half, you may be looking at the seven the other way. So take your time. Get it in the, you're not going to turn down a touchdown, but you might want it uh, with about 30 seconds to go would be nice. They like to run the draw down here also. McGuire, left side, he'll walk in. Touchdown, Miami. Gary, that offensive line just walled it off, allowing McGuire to have his easiest carry of the night. Yes, well, they spread everybody out to the far side of the line. They had to have three receivers over there, so they had four defensive backs. They just didn't have anybody to come up and play any type of defensive uh, force from the secondary, and he walks in. Huerta's extra point attempt is good. He keeps his string alive, and with 148 remaining until halftime, it's Miami 14 and BYU 10. 
that was a big one for Miami. Here you see it. There, there he had off to McGuire right there. Comes out. This is a walk in. Nice combination blocking right there. Chudzinski and Sullivan and Searcy. They come out. It was Searcy and, and Chudzinski. They, they team off. They double one guy and then they rub off on the linebacker right there. Here you see Dennis. Has he got the call? Little body action? Yes. You know, when our. In our phone hookup this past week, we talked with uh, both Dennis and his coordinators, and he made the point that one of the things he wants to happen with this football team, here, better situation for running, but he wants Miami to be more of a running football team. 50-50 this right. year. And they were close to 50-50 last year, but when you look at the statistics, it may be a little misleading because they were so far ahead in many games that they were running the ball a lot in the fourth quarter. He would like to be about 50-50 in the first half, and that's a key to his team. He feels that the, uh, being with the same offense for the second year, everybody together, they're more on the same page with the running game this year. Carlos Huerta will kick it off for Miami. BYU with a, a lot of time left until halftime, 148. Kick will come to the near side and out of bounds just before it reaches the end zone. That was to the side of Tony Crutchfield. And Huerta... <laughs> You know, who is extremely, <laughs> well, you talk about a hard worker. I mean, Fridays are, are real light workouts. In fact, uh, sometimes it's almost like a joke. But, I mean, he was out here for 30, 35 minutes. Even after the team left the field, he kicked the entire afternoon. Well, that's why he's an All-American. You know, I always had to ask the guys when they kicked like this, you know, you guys make 90-some uh, extra points in a row and you kick it out of bounds on the kickoff. I never could understand it. There's 50 yards to kick the ball in. They just try to make that perfect kickoff. Just That's a, few, what it is. a few more steps to make that mistake. <laughs> the lights are now on here at the stadium. We don't need them yet, but we will be uh, within the next 30 to 45 minutes. It has just been a glorious day in Provo, Utah. I'm looking forward to this minute 48, two-minute drill right with uh, Dr. Ty coming out here. Coming down to Crutchfield at the seven. Across the 25 to the 26. So BYU is 74 yards away, and Gary's point is well taken. Now it shows a minute 42 on the clock. This minute 42 could take 20 minutes to play if Ty Detmer has his way. You know, yesterday it was a short workout for BYU also, but one of the things they do practice on Friday, which I like to see, is they practice the two-minute drill. They kind of walked through it, but they went through it. You know, play after play, at the line, at the line. So they're used to running it. Detmer, 19 of 28 for 207 yards and one interception. Smith, his tight end. That's a good open field tackle by Roland Smith. He just wasn't going to look at anything but his belly button and nailed him at the 30. Calling him at the line now. He's got hand signals to the outside guys. He calls it by the voice to the inside guys. Salido out of the backfield and very close to the first down. In fact, from where they have spotted it, he will have it. So that will stop the clock just for a moment as they move the chains with 72 seconds left until halftime. Crum and Smith combining in the tackle for Miami. Well, the chain gang's getting to work out. They're going to keep doing it all night. They're going to be a lot of yards on this, on this uh, board before we get done. Bellini. Instead of coming out of bounds, he cut back into the middle of the field. They'll make the tackle at the 45. Roland Smith again. It's three in a row that he's had to make. Ty's looking for a field goal, looking for three points. Of course, he'll take a touchdown. Pushed around, marker is down, and he will be sacked. Maryland on top, but I think you'll find 97, Anthony Hamlet down on the bottom of the pile. Now the interesting thing here for Miami, that is going to be a loss of nine. It obviously is holding from where the marker's been thrown. You would think that they would just take the play, right? Well, they probably will. The first holding. Here you see Russell. They're going to try to double team him if they can, but when they bring more than four guys, they got to look around. A couple teams sacked there. They might get a half a sack each on that one. There's Hamlet coming from the backside, left side of your screen. 97. He grabs him first, and then Maryland for good measure. Third down, Brigham Young. Third down, they need 10 yards for the first. Get him, get him. Holy 
Detmer over the middle Nyberg crosses midfield to the 44 and now look for BYU to take a timeout Detmer calls for the timeout the clock has 31 seconds on it BYU 10 Miami 14 we'll be back in just a moment 14 to 10, Miami leads, 31 seconds left. The scoring summary, McGuire with a seven yard run of Zakeen's one on top in the first quarter. Matt Bellini, a 14 yard pass on a scramble effort that was wonderful by Detmer. They tied it at seven. Then Kaufman put the Cougars on top, 10 to seven, 31 yard field goal. And just a few moments ago, McGuire walked it in around the left side, three yard touchdown. Huerta with the extra point, and that's how we stand right now, 14 to 10. 31 seconds left until halftime. He needs about 20 more yards, it looks to me, to get the field goal. Let's see how he does it. Denver has it complete to Bellini. Breaks off a tackle at the 30. He's to the 25. Bailey finally stopped him, but it's good for 19. He's either got a play called here or he'll ground the ball real quickly. If he has a play called, he'll go with it. It's to his advantage. The defense is tired. Over the middle has Salino at the one. Plenty of time. Miami is asking for a timeout on the sideline. Now, whether the defense has seen it, yep, they have. Timeout Miami with 14 seconds left until halftime. That's their last timeout now, and that puts them into a passing situation only. Dennis will realize this. They'll understand that he has to throw the ball now. He's probably going to get three plays and, 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 and be able to kick the field goal on fourth down if he has to, but he can't take the chance of running the ball now because they'll never get another play on. I'm kind of surprised he just didn't line up there right away with the, with the clock stopped in college football. He'll just go up there, take the snap, and ground it real quick. Probably would have only taken two more seconds and he could have saved that last time out. Hey, who am I to say? The guy's throw for 300 yards this half, though. Or you see it right here. He looks off left, moves the safeties, turn back right. He knew what he was doing all the way. Puts it right on the mark again. Crum finished him off. It's about a yard and a half away. You know, he put on a passing exhibition against Penn State for over 500 yards. And they shut down Vinny Testaverde in that big uh, national championship game a couple years ago. And they, they said they just couldn't dial a defense that he didn't recognize and react to. He's just making all the right decisions. Ty Depper. Look at those numbers. Second quarter, 205 yards in this quarter alone. We still have 14 seconds left. 287 first half yards for Denver. I guess he's going to add to that 300-yard passing record. Well, <laughs> last week he had over 300. In fact, he had uh, 387. And he said he was on hand. He said he wasn't pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Bellini and Tui Pelotu have come into the backfield. Also, a Boyce and one of the wide receivers. He's a senior from Salt Lake. He is their possession type receiver, number 17. Who's and Nyberg, number 29. Nobody's covering this guy. Rolls it. Touchdown, Boyce. on this stadium it would have gone sky high when that <laughs> touchdown pass was thrown they simply erupted Kaufman good
Craig Erickson on the near side of the field. His ball club now trailing by three. Let's look at it again. All right, there you see Ty. He's going to roll away from the rush. He knew they were going to be coming. The receiver comes in from the outside, runs a little kind of a stop into the corner, and he's wide open. A pitch and catch. Touchdown. It doesn't come much easier than that. There you see it again. He's going to run away from that backside. Nobody can catch him on that way. Easy Roland throw. Smith Roland just Smith. got a really late break, and not that it, even if he had broken on time, it would have well, been. Well, what it was really was a type of a pick pass. Watch, he'll close down, he'll stop on it. Can't really get a good look at it. All you see is Ty right there. But they faked the pick pass, and then he broke back out. Johnson and Hill back in a twin safety for Miami. They had 10 seconds left. Well, we talked about them not giving them enough time, but they gave them too much time that time on that two-minute drill. Kaufman, for the third time, has kicked it either to the base of or out of the end zone. There you see the guy. He's got a gash. He's got stitches, but he also has got close to 300 yards in the first half. He asked him a question the last couple days. It's yes, sir. It's like a paper boy. But he's doing more than delivering today. He's delivering a, a, a possibility of uh, shocking another number one team in the opening game. Ten seconds left. McGuire the lone setback, and they will keep it with him rather than put it up and take a chance on a turnover as Beagle makes the stop, and the clock will run out and listen to him as they head to the locker room. Do they love it in Provo? The only thing I could say after that is the display that Detmer put on was Heisman kind of performance. On the other hand, Miami is still only down three points in this football game, and they can put it in from any place on the field. Well, that, there's no doubt about that. They can score, but also BYU has left their mark on this game that they can score also. Had it not been for some turnovers, it could have been worse, but Ty has definitely put on as good a performance as I've ever seen from a college football player in the first half. I mean, this is a defensive team Miami has here that is the number one defensive team coming in this year. They shut down everybody. He's frustrated them. His emotion leadership has picked up his own football team at the same time even little things like uh, Matt Bellini not fair catching and kind of just puts it right in their face like we're not going to be intimidated by you tonight Miami we're going to catch it you're going to hit us but we're still going to move the ball you remember I told you that yesterday BYU is in awe of nobody and they have shown it That's in the right. first half it should be a great second 30 minutes Chris Fowler will be along at halftime along with Lee Corso to bring you up to date on what else has happened in college football today but right now let's go to a break BYU 17 to 14. They made on halftime. See what adjustments Craig Erickson's made. Still no touchdown passes. Fellas? Well, there's the score, 17 to 14. Brigham Young University leading over Miami at halftime. And as you look at what is a gorgeous sunset, just back to the west of uh, the stadium here at Cougar Stadium in Provo, Utah. So uh, a lot of things for these people to smile about. And when you look at what Detmer has done in the second quarter alone, he passed for over 200 yards against a defense, which you made the point uh, that they are as good as any college defense in the nation. Well, even Lavelle said, Lavelle Edwards said, they're the best front seven his team has ever faced. And Ty just ripped them apart by just hitting his backs and picking them and frustrating them a little bit. Let's show you the replay of the scoring in the first half as the Canes got on the board first. McGuire with the first of his two touchdowns as he goes over the right side, takes a couple of Cougars with him. Huerta was good, and it's 7-0. Then Detmer with part of his magic in the first half. Scrambling, still scrambling. He will find Bellini in the corner of the end zone, right there. Then Erickson goes to McGuire again as the Canes with a great job of blocking on that left side seals it off and McGuire with a second touchdown of the evening. But then just before halftime here's Detmer rolling the pocket to his right and Boyce in the back of the end zone nobody is around for the touchdown the quarterback comparison in the first half 
Uh, Erickson, 6 of 11, 51 yards. Detmer, 26 of 35, 289 yards. Two touchdowns, Detmer, one interception at BYU with four turnovers in the first half, and they still lead by three. Well, Another play that scared BYU just a little bit. Ty right here. He gets the ball off this time, but he waits till the last second, and he gets the helmet right under the chin. Gets probably, I'm sure he got a couple stitches. He turns around and looks. He has to, has to survive it, but he gets the ball off. He's got a little cut right here. There you see the stats so far, 289 passing yards. The real surprise here, we talked about the Miami rushing. They needed to hold them down, but 51 yards passing. Really the story of the game. Miami only able to throw the ball 51 yards. So we are ready for the second half kickoff here in Provo, Utah. 17 to 14. Number one Miami trailing by three to Brigham Young. BYU still here to take a shot at the tie. Is still going to have to do it in the second half, though. As good as Ty has played in the first half, they're still only up by three points. A lot of time. He's going to have to keep performing the magic. Coffins kick off to Johnson. Five yards deep, and again, he will not return it. What an asset that is to special teams to have a kicker that takes you out of harm's way as far as the possibility of a long return. Every time he put, puts a foot on it, and that's what Coffin has done this evening. No what do you look for here in the second hand? Miami has to throw the ball better. I mean, they're not giving Craig enough protection. They have to spread the ball. They have to throw the ball to the wideout. They're playing the man-to-man. -man. They have to give him just another second to throw the ball so Craig can follow through on his passes. Alex Johnson opens as the lone setback. Hill tries to break off the tackle, and he's out to the 30. Brian Mitchell, the right corner, is there to grab him. You know, a lot of times we try to make this football game a little too complicated. I mean, it's not really a game of chess. It's checkers. If they double the inside guys, you throw out. If they move to the outside guys, you hit your backs on the inside. If they drop too many people back, you run the ball. It's just not that complicated when you have the type of athletes Miami has. Dennis Erickson in his second year as the head coach at Miami. McGuire has won Fatissimano defensively for the Cougars is there to knock him down. You see number 59, Lewis Cr uh, Cristobal, senior from Miami Columbus High School. One of the offensive linemen in front on that play. Here you see the counter trap, but they're not covering Fatissimano with anybody, a tight end, a back, or anyone. And he's coming free from the backside. In the past, Miami has put a receiver or someone there to get in his way. Johnson, look out, crosses the 45, and he is out to the 47-yard line. Levitt tripped him up. That's good for 16 yards. Johnson on a little bit of a wide screen. He's going to take an outside flare of control and wait for those linemen to come up. It's a cutback play all the way. He's trying to set those linemen up to like come back out, cut the linebacker, the defensive back, Alex Johnson, with the speed of cutting behind those big guys. Erickson looks, nobody open on the far side. Thomas threw it a little high, but Thomas, I think, is as upset with himself as he is with, with uh, Erickson over the throw. One thing Craig has to get a little bit better on, he's tough, he can throw the ball hard, he stands in the pocket, but he has to become a, just a little bit more accurate. He threw the ball last year at 53% for the year. He needs to get that up in the 60% range with the type of offense he's running, the short options and the short routes that he's throwing. He can't miss those easy throws like that. Johnson moves up a step, pass is thrown complete to the 46 to Wesley Carroll. Mitchell, one of the first to come over and make the hit on him along with Josh Arnold. You had it right. He called an audible there, a little flat by Wesley Carroll. He knew he had a man-to-man. -man. He knew it was man-to-man -man coverage. He steps back, takes the three-step drop, and goes to one of his favorite receivers, big target, Wesley Carroll. That's what BYU has to do, though. They have to hit after the catch. No big runs after the catch. Hill on the far side at the 41, and that's enough for the Miami first down. 
you've seen Miami has made the adjustment. Offensive coordinator Bob Bradkowski has noticed that there's single coverage in those wide outs out there. Craig's just rearing back, throwing it, giving them a little bit of the same thing that Ty's been doing to the, to the Miami defense, getting it off quick. Lamar Thomas made the reception. I beg your pardon, I said Hill. He comes out on this play. It is a first and ten of the line of scrimmage to BYU 41. Pass is tipped, and he had him wide open. It was Josh Arnold who got a hand on him. Boy, he had a huge play there. Big play by Josh Arnold. It was a man-to-man -man coverage. He loses a little counter boot action right here. He comes out. He has Chudzinski wide open, or was it Randy Bethel? It was Randy Bethel wide open coming across. That would have been down to the 20-yard line, 15-yard line easy if he completes this one. In 1989, the only time that Miami trailed at halftime was at Florida State. They lost that ball game 24 to 10. Ball is tipped and knocked down for T.C. Motto. Number 37 is right there. They tried the screen pass again. They invite Petisimano upfield, but this time he smells it out, jumps up, and knocks it back down. He's having a, he's having a game like a tie. He's, he's going to share some of the some of the headlines tomorrow. Get up, knock that thing down in your face. Of the eight incompletions by Erickson, four have been tipped. Over the middle has it complete to Wesley Carroll. Let's see where they're going to give him forward progress. They're going to spot it down inside the 31-yard line. That's the reason for the reaction to the crowd, and that would be enough for the first down for Miami. Looks like he has it. Great job of reading here by Craig. They go with zero backs. He reads hot to the right side and delivers the ball. He and Wesley Carroll run on the play. Just do it perfectly. Need to explain a couple of things here. Zero backs and hot. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Well, when, they bring that, when they ring, bring that uh, back out of the backfield, he's got nobody back there. So as we talked before, that tight end has to look in case one of those linebackers blitz. Seventeen to fourteen. Brigham Young leading over Miami, but the Canes are driving with a first down. The ball just outside the Cougar 30-yard line. 12:44 left in this third period. Incomplete. Hill was the man he was looking for. Crutchfield was squeezing him on the sideline. Number three, Brandon Hill, depending on the play. Number 24, Cody Crutchfield. Injured his hand last year. In fact. We had the game with Miami and Florida State, and Craig was unable to play in that one. Gino Toretta got the start. And we are told that Erickson's hand still, from time to time, aches a little bit. Right up the middle, McGuire, he's going to have the first down inside the 20 at the 18. McGuire hits this one running full speed. Going to get an end zone shot, look at it right here. He comes back, they've been passing the ball a lot, drawing in that rush. A little short action, man to man. The defensive, uh, I mean, the offensive tackle comes in and traps the middle linebacker right up the middle. Boy, he gets off the ball quick. 62 yards for McGuire on 15 carries. Over the middle has Chudzinski. Inside the 10, it's first and goal, Kings. Rob Chudzinski seems like he's been playing this Braves team for about the 10 years, doesn't he? But he's coming back, throwing it off his back foot right here. Chudzinski wide open, looked like a busted coverage. Nobody guarded him. Craig went to the right man. Beautiful drive here. Whoa, look at the wide splits. And now Erickson wants a timeout. He had Conley as his only setback. So we'll come back and show you what happens. 17-14, BYU.
charge maintenance included. And by the Jewelers of America. Is two months' salary too much to spend for something that lasts forever? Well, following the timeout, Erickson looked as though that he wanted to call an audible. The, right. the wide splits, that he wanted to go with a running play, but he didn't have time to get the audible off. This drive, 63 yards. You could see more than that in the first half. McGuire. Touchdown, Connolly, I beg your pardon, 28. And the Hurricane goes back on top. Once they get inside that five-yard line, they're just a pounded into the end zone. Uh, Conley, this time, McGuire, the first two. Uh, Conley is, is quicker version, maybe, of McGuire. McGuire, a little bit more st strength up there, but uh, they just, that was a great drive by Miami. They had an idea when they came out in the second half, they were going to throw the ball outside, they were going to run the ball up the middle, and they did it. Carlos Huerta. Knocks it home. It's 94 straight in his career in Miami. The number one preseason ranked team goes on top by four. Let's go back to Chris Fowler for this update. Okay, fellas, let's go to Baton Rouge. And the Tigers of LSU have jumped in front. Tommy Hodson's heir apparent, Saul Graves, 15 yards to Todd the Heat Kinchin. LSU added a field goal after a turnover. It's now 15 to 10. Tigers in the third quarter. Chris, you, you think they might have gotten a little excited down in uh, Tiger Town in that one? Kenshin was covered extremely closely by the Georgia defensive back, and he still made the catch. Let's take another look at the touchdown by Conley. There you see it, the wide splits. They're trying to spread him out. He's just going to run, take his spot inside, outside, and use the speed. A couple guys might have been little grabs there, but you're going to get away with that down near the goal line. Good run to daylight here. You see... Sullivan, you see Chris the ball pushing their guys back. Then he made the inside move on Mitchell as Beagle. And, and Beagle got frozen and he out sprinted him to the, to the sideline. Good running play. Miami showing that they can move the ball outside with the pass and inside with the run. Where does kickoff? This will be Gray at the three. the 25 and now the 26 before he's getting tackled 21 17 the hurricanes on top 11 39 left to play third period and for the first time in the second half we see detmer greg erickson you know, we back in this third quarter doing a really good job no directing his club. Big stud. You know, here comes Ty in, though. You know, we were talking at halftime. All those colleges that are recruiting guys, they say you got to be 6'3", 215. All you dads out there with quarterbacks a little smaller, keep this videotape. You don't have to be 6'3". In fact, I'm wondering if he's even 5'2". No, I don't think he is. <laughs> Bellini. Breaks off the tackle by Smith and will pick up another six, now seven yards. Crum knocked him out of bounds. Having a halfback like Bellini is so valuable because you can line him up in the backfield, but when you split him out, he can run weird patterns like a wide receiver. Right here, you see him run through one tackle, run through another. Maurice Crum, he's not going to run through that one, though. But Delaney now has caught nine passes for 104 yards. Well, you can see the collision in the backfield, but Tui Pelotu still will take it out for the first down. Wasn't drawn up that way, but they will move the markers across the field. Usually they don't draw them up the way Ty scrambles, but on the running plays like that, a uh, little bit of a mix up here. The important thing, though, is that the uh, offensive line for BYU is putting some holes out there for him to run through. Another first down. <laughs> Andy Boyce at the Miami 46-yard line. And the Miami secondary right now is standing with their hands on their hips, just staring at one another. 
it's tough enough to play man-to-man -man coverage in the college against a great a great passer, let alone when the passer knows what the coverage is. Right now, Ty sees it. He knows it's man-to-man. -man. He knows all he has to do is lay it up, watch the receiver, Boyce. Kate fades to the ball where only he can ca catch the ball. Ty puts it in a spot where only Boyce can catch the ball. Well, he's now field. over 300 yards. Ty Detmer, 311 at the 11.05 mark of the third quarter. Over the middle, Smith, the tight end, turns it up for a couple of more yards to the 38 and a half. Darren Smith defensively. Well, that's not bad. 15 career starts, 15 300 plus passing games. That's just incredible. I had, you know, 15 starts for me. I was happy just to finish the game 15 times, let alone pass for 15 300 yards. Well, the, the press box down below was a buzz at halftime about Detmer's performance. Draw play. To Pelotu gets by one, takes it down to the 30, and Daryl Williams took his feet out from under him. But moved the chains again, BYU with a first down. This is the draw trap that has been so effective with him. He turns, hands it to him. There you see the tackle coming across the trap. That's Armstead that missed him. Makes a couple guys miss. Another first down. Beautiful offense. They've got backs that can catch the ball, run the ball, and keep everybody off balance, and they've got a maestro there playing quarterback. Detmer throws against the grain, has Zumbel complete down to the 11 yard line. Little counteraction this time he comes out. They got the all-out blitz on again. He comes back. He knows he's got him now. Watch him turn his shoulders and deliver it right on the money. And Just don't know how hard that is. Back to the line of scrimmage very quickly is Detmer. Touchdown, BYU. Drop the ball. Drop it. Zundell, the intended receiver, thought he had it, and then it came loose. Bailey was right there on him can't tell you how good of a read this is. He wanted to throw the ball to the other side. He reads a guy wide open, puts it right there, took his eye off it. It's easy to say. He was already if coming. Bailey hadn't hammered him, I'm not sure he would have dropped it. Maybe, maybe on the second catch he would have got it. You're right. You know, the pass before this, when you make the great point about him squaring his shoulders, going against the grain to throw, a lot of quarterbacks play a long time and never understand that completely. Troy Pelotu, the intended receiver, kind of threw that one on his right hip. Now it's going to be third down BYU. They can pick up a first down without scoring, but they have to take it to the Miami one-yard line. Yes, a tough 11 yards right here. This is when Miami's been blitzing every play here. They've just been challenging him to not give him the time. You just can't give Ty enough time. He's going to find someone open every time. They've just got to put the pressure on him. Lavelle Edwards pacing the sideline across the field. Tenth play of the drive. One second of the 25-second clock, and wisely, BYU calls a timeout. So we'll take a break. Miami 21, BYU 17. BYU almost got caught with the 25-second clock. You could see the two offensive players in the backfield run together as they were trying to shift on an audible. Detmer looked up and saw the 25-second clock and called timeout to avoid the five-yard penalty. So it's third down and 10 at the Miami 11. Back to tie. The lane. Throws it, almost intercepted. That was Hurley Brown. Hurley Brown who knocked it away on the throwback to the quarterback. Lavelle is well known for this play, uses it in all the All-Star games. Hurley Brown stayed home though, stayed with Ty. Watch Ty hand the ball off, tries to get lost. Bellini's gonna stop, 
try to get the cheap touchdown. Hurley Brown, nice job here. Great defense. Very intelligent play. It's easy to get caught and lost in that play. 29-yard field goal attempt by Cochran. Weiss the holder. And he knocks it home. We have a one-point game. 9.26, left third period. Miami 21, BYU 20. is probably the best. Uh, certainly no one has been this good at his stage in his career as Ty Detmer. He has the, he has the cool and the, uh, the uh, gamesmanship of a McMahon. He has the athletic ability of a Steve Young. He has the arm of Robbie Bosco. He, he has it all. Nine minutes and 26 seconds left in the third period. We have just been handed the attendance on tonight's ball game, and it is a new record, 66,235. That's in a stadium that holds 65,000. <laughs> Hopefully the fire marshal is at the movie tonight. Kaufman, they still haven't returned to kick off. Over Alex Johnson's head. The Miami Hurricanes obviously had some fruitful discussions at halftime because that band right there directed far and away the best drive that Miami has had in the ballgame to open the third period. They were in control. They had an idea what they wanted to do, and that's been good on Craig because they said they gave him something that worked. A lot of times you're out there on the field and something's not working. You don't know why. They told him why, and now he's adjusted to it. Erickson was 6 of 10 for 63 yards on that first drive of the second half. Avoids one sack, still gets it away incomplete. Randall Hill, the intended receiver. Let's go back to Chris Fowler. Here's another update. Thanks, fellas. A couple of coaches in their first season in new places struggled today. Alabama beaten by Southern Miss 27 to 24. The Tide outgains the Eagles 2 to 1. Southern Miss wins the only stat that counts. And Bill Curry's Kentucky team routed at the Meadowlands 24-8 by Rutgers. The Knights, six interceptions in the game. It's two more than they had all of last year. Let's go back now to Provo. The Knights said goodnight to Bill Curry and company. Erickson sings it complete out at the 33-yard line to Lamar Thomas who is probably the best leaper of these Miami receivers. That's good for 14. We commented in watching him work out yesterday. His legs look like they come all, all up to the bottom of his chest. He looks like a high jumper, and I think he's injured a hand or an arm. He did there on the catch. You know what I like about these Miami receivers, though? They, you'll see right here, Craig is going to drop back. He looks to his left to see if he has to throw to one of his hot receivers, delivers a strike. Watch him catch it in his hands. That you're not going to get the fumbles that way, and somebody comes down and kind of screens it a little bit, looks like. Over the middle, Carroll wide open, and oh, he overthrew him by about five yards. Oh, my. Wesley Carroll had broken clear toward the far sideline, and you could bet nobody is any more upset than Craig Erickson. Right. Now they've, they've run the ball effectively. That's the second play action pass they've tried. That'll add a new weapon to his arsenal, and he's got to put a little more air on it and lead him to the sideline away from the free safety. He had had a nice completion there. Lamar obviously is okay as he comes back on the field. He's a wiry one at 6'3", but only 170 pounds. Connolly went in motion to get it out to Carroll. Stiff arms the first man and is pushed out of bounds. Josh Arnold came back and got him at the 43. See Dennis Erickson now. They have no backs in the backfield. You're going to see the slot man blitz, and Wesley Carroll will break off his route. There's the hot receiver. Craig delivers it on time, and if you bust a couple tackles, you pick up some big yardage. You got eight on that play. You have to make them pay when they blitz you. Well, on third downs, these are the numbers. Four yards or less. Miami three of four. Right now, they need about a yard and a half. McGuire, I don't know. Levitt caught him with the ankles. Dixon was there as well. And because the chain is all the way across the field, 
it, it still looks as though he's not going to have it. Going to be fourth down Miami. Big play here. You know, they just can't afford to give the ball too many more times to tie. Let's see if they go for it on fourth down. Punting unit is not on the field. Crowd comes to their feet. We'll let you watch and listen. Kaposi who made the tackle and BYU will take it over in Miami territory. Kafusi, the strongest, best athlete on that defensive line, just sidesteps the block, kind of gets small in the hole and meets him head on, which you have to do in the short yardage. He's the emotional leader of this defensive team. Watch, he gets small and then he gets big, head on on short yardage. He makes the stop, a tremendous play by Kafusi. So Detmer. One more time, you see him get in the hole. Big turnover there. Quick out, Bellini. He's in double figures on catches tonight and almost picks up the first down at the Miami 36. Charles Farms is there to wrestle him down. I know you've all seen Miami play football over the years. There you see Bellini, 10 receptions, 112 yards. He's a halfback, but he split them all out over, all over the field. And this is a different Miami team. You don't see them out there talking today. One of the reasons is they're just too tired to talk. They've been chasing these guys around all over the field. Running play, and Salido has the first down at the 33. Maurice Crum defensively. Maurice looks as though he is a little bit winded, doesn't he, as he gets up? It. They've been chasing all over the field, putting, watching guys in motion, three-step drops, five-foot drops, dashes, bootlegs. They've seen it all, and they are really sucking wind right now. You know, I'm not so sure. It's, Dennis wasn't really worried about the altitude because of the heat they've been working out in, in Miami. I just think it's the pace of the game and the offensive pattern that they have had to try to defend tonight, don't you? I believe that also. No backs, throws it complete. That's Chris Smith. There's an example right there of Chris Smith and Ty Detmer being on the same page. He just goes out, they read a little zone. Right here comes the shot of Russell Maryland getting double teamed, and he fires it. It's a whip shot right in there. Tight end turns around, the ball's on the way, he catches on the knees, he keeps it low, too. That's the IZ on those passes. Put it in the stomach, get the eight, nine yards, be satisfied. Six catches for Smith for 71 yards. You see the blitz coming. Pass is thrown complete to Nyberg, and he's not going to get the first down. That's a good one-on-one -on -one play by Roland Smith. injured a knee, had surgery after the Notre Dame game. Probably the better of the zone players as far as the secondary people for the Miami Hurricanes, but Ryan McNeil has been coming on so quickly. As much man-to-man -man coverage, you probably will see Ryan a little bit more. 354 yards, only the third quarter for us. Salido. Close to the first down is Kip Mike Vickers, Salido. who has come in replacing Mark Caesar at that defensive tackle position. And from where they have spotted it, nope, I don't think he's got it, Gary. I think he's no. still about a half yard away. Now it's Lavelle's turn to make the big decision right here. Fourth and short. How does he do it? Is he going to take three points and take the lead, or is he going to go for the first down? Well, the person we see coming on is Valdez. Remember also, they could try to use the long count to try to draw him off also, but I think they'll probably throw the ball here. Detmer to run it. Cuts inside, and with that move, has the first down at the 19. Great call there. Makes the play action pass, rolls out, gives you two options, either to throw the ball or run it. Ty's slippery, it picks up the first down. 
21 to 20. Miami leads. Detmer now eight rushes, 15 yards. As you look at it again, well, you see he's got to protect. You see he's got uh, Chris Smith wide open, but he knows he also has a first down if he just runs the ball. Whoop! Yeah, he makes a miss. He's only he's so slippery. He's so small. It's a tough target. Complete at the eight-yard line to Boyce. right there in your picture Eric Miller and you can see how hard he is breathing all out effort those down linemen having to give on every play and with BYU throwing as much as they have tonight it has been exhausting we still got another quarter to play Portland on the sweep spins off a tackle of Charles Farms and gets down inside the seven this is where the only place on the field that Miami has been able to stop the Cougars all night is inside this 10 yard line. They've been doing it with the Buddy Ryan 4 6 or Bear defense. They're lying, lining eight guys up there and they're just pinching from the outside and coming full speed. And there's not much time to throw the ball and, it, and there's not much room to run. It. So they're having some problems with this defense. Denver gets away touchdown <laughs> Salido trying to figure out uh, who Ty Detmer reminds me of and I think it's Fran Tarkenton the more you watch him play he just makes something go on every play he's in command he's a leader he throws the ball on the money he uses all of his players and when you try to defense a guy like that you got to defend 11 players when you're playing against a guy like uh, Ty Detmer well it's 26 21 and the reason that Detmer has come up to the line of scrimmage is because the offense when you go for two can ask for the ball to be placed either in the middle of the field or on either hash and they have elected to put it on the far hash mark which is the left side of the field as they go in. Of course they're trying to get it to a 27 point lead instead of a uh, they can get two right now. Over the middle has boys. together and then he finds somebody you know sometimes you can scramble but it's hard to find somebody downfield he not only scrambles well watch those two guys just explode into each other then he has the presence to find someone in the end zone Salido breaking open for the touchdown and then they come back and hit Royce Royce for the two-point conversion and it is 28 to 21 BYU 346 left of the third period The Mormons are on fire here. They get a little emotion from the people right now. I thought this was supposed to be a laid-back crowd. They are in it. Kaufman again. They still have it returned to kick. <laughs> Yeah. 
28 21 as the defense from Miami convenes on the sideline. Boy, you saw the pressure that they had on the youngster. Maryland and Armstead ran together. They both thought they had him. Kafusi steps up into the hole, number 59. Kafusi, the senior, is playing the game of his life tonight. He's beaten him quickly off the line. The senior English major is just in the backfield every play in those running plays. Erickson overthrows, looking for Randall Hill. Here you see Ty coming back. They've got the inside receiver running a corner and the outside receiver in the flat. He wants to throw it long, and he comes back without setting his feet and throws high. If Ty has a problem, is he, when he goes to a secondary receiver, he doesn't get his feet ready just quick enough. He's 14 of 26 for 137 yards. Whips it out complete to Carroll, gets off a tackle, and is out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Whew, what a big first down for Miami. That quieted the crowd. Well, the Cougars got him to throw the ball exactly who they wanted to, a five-yard gain. They just got to come up and make the tackle now, and they punt the ball. That's what happens when you don't make the tackle on those short passes. That'll kill you all night. A lot of guys will say, you know, why are you throwing the ball less than 10 yards when you need 10 yards? This is the reason, because the guy is still allowed to run with the ball. Kindly in motion, they really spread him out. They throw over the middle and have it complete to Daryl Spencer, who had just checked into the backfield and out close to midfield. That's good for 18 yards. Darrell is a sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. Or from Merritt Island. I beg your pardon. Stats on Craig. 166 yards, 16 of 28. was the receiver he was looking for. One of the things Ty has to be careful right now is not to try to just to compete against Ty. I mean, Craig has to be careful with right now is not to compete with Ty Depp. He has to move his offense, use his running game, use his players, not just try to match stats against the other guy who's having a great night. Running play with Conley will go nowhere while they sort this out. Let's go back to Chris. Okay, fellas, number 11, Illinois, is down in Tucson. Illini have a great defense, but the first time they're on the field this season, Michael Bates of the Cats busted in the end zone three yards out. Arizona up 7-0 in the first. Rough day so far for the Big Ten. Minnesota losing, Wisconsin lost, and Ohio State won but struggled. Well, speaking of struggles, <laughs> Chris, we got a really good one here. BYU 28-21 might be who has the football last in this ball game. And when they have these seven-point differentials, it sets you up for that two-point conversion at the end of the game. Do they go for it or not go for it, too? Second down and 15 for Miami. They scrimmage for their own 45. Kind of surprised they took that penalty. Hill, and he gets nailed by Mitchell. That's something that Miami likes to do. They can get the single up out there that their wide outs are so quick that they depend on them to break that first tackle and then pick up another 10 or 15 yards. Both offenses have been, offenses have been using the same strategy. 
the Cougar defensive backs have to come up and make the tackle. He tried to get half of it there. It's still third and ten, so he needs to pick up ten yards here. Erickson incomplete. It was Wesley Carroll that he wanted. Derwin Gray, a sophomore from San Antonio, Texas, was defending. Here you see Craig, he wants to go left. He reads it properly. He has Wesley Carroll right here. Threw the ball a little bit behind him, but there was a reason for it. Because Rocky Beagle read his eyes and was in the way of the throw. Snyder, kick off the side of his foot, but he takes a Miami roll, and this one is going to be down at the 11-yard line. 39 yards on that punt. Marucci got downfield to down it. Now they're going to say around the 13. Well, next Saturday, an Ivy League game, Pennsylvania and Dartmouth. That begins at 12.30 Eastern time. And in the second game of our doubleheader, Gary and I will be at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, Michigan State against Syracuse. That begins at 7.30 Eastern Time next Saturday here on ESPN. <laughs> Incomplete wanted voice on the play, and you can see a fine defensive job by Roland Smith, kind of shoved him out of his route. They did, and they've gone to the bear defense now, Ron, all over the field. It's the only thing that's been able to put any pressure on Ty, and they're just going to have to sell out. The zones aren't working. They can't disguise, so they're just going to have to sell out, bring seven men, bring eight men, and just try to put the pressure on them. Minute 36, left in the third. Detmer swings it out, and Nyberg drops it. Well, he's human. Ty's human. First bad pass of the night. He had him wide open, threw it behind him. He probably won't be able to sleep tonight now because he threw a bad pass. So in every start that the youngster has had, since he is over 300 yards tonight. He has never had a game which he has started that he has thrown for less than 300 yards. Simply incredible. Blitz from the outside, throws it incomplete. Detmer got whacked down hard. Chris Smith was the man that he was looking for. And the Kane stand to get some good field position out of this. Darren Smith, 45 was coming hard from the left side. You see Robbie Bosco talking to Detmer as he comes off the field. This is only the second punt of the night by Kaufman. His first one good for 43. Wow. All the way back to the 25-yard line is Carroll. Looks for a block and there are no. Nine yards in the kick, loss of four on the return, and Brad Clark was the first person to hit it. Well, that's just what they needed. I mean, they were Miami's looking at having great field position. All of a sudden, they got it back on the 23-yard line. It's much, much more difficult to drive the ball 77 yards than 60 yards. Let's go back and look at the blitz and the pressure on Ty. You see him. He has to throw the ball because here comes somebody, and it was a little bit before Chris Smith could make his break. That's what that rushing defense, the Miami, the Bear defense comes in right now and puts a hit on him before he wanted to throw the ball. Erickson, lots of time. And he just throws it away. Chetzinski was the closest to it. You know, with a 59-yard putt, you might think that you would out kick your coverage, but 
because he drove him back so far and high. I mean, he kicked it pretty high, but you're right. He was lined up a little too close, and he had to catch it going away from the line of scrimmage, so he couldn't get that field upfield uh, head of steam that you need to do to catch it and beat that first guy. Conley comes out as the setback, and Alex Johnson, the senior, checks into the ball game. Number 21. Out to the 28-yard line, Levitt would not let go. Gary Lock was made about team speed coming into this one. What is the story here? Because you look at the Miami defense, and we talk about linebackers who run 4-5, defensive linemen who run 4-8s and 4-9s. But somehow BYU has found something to neutralize that. They seem to have confused Miami both offensively and defensively, and they've just been executing so well. Doesn't matter how fast you run when you execute the ball that well on offense. Erickson throws complete to Lamar Thomas at the 40, and that's good for the first down plus it off seven. Derwin Gray defensively for the Cougars. You see the receivers, they spread them out across the field. Craig is just going to pick out which guy single covered. Lamar just finds a little hole and delivers the first down right there. Kind of an option play. He's going to stop, field man to man or zone coverage, just set in the hole, and Craig delivers in the ball. Pitch and catch. Four seconds left in the quarter as they go with Alex Johnson. And that will do it for the third period of play as Levitt is there defensively at a timeout on the field. As you take a look at young Ty Detmer, his football team with a seven-point lead, but still there are 15 minutes left. We'll be right back. Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson in Provo, Utah. Number one against number 16. And right now it's number 16 who leads by seven points. And the fourth quarter, Gary, actually, both of these teams think that they own the fourth, fourth quarter because they both this so many times have either come from behind or, or put it away. Well, they're used to winning, and they're used to owning the fourth quarter. So uh, something's got to give. Complete. Lamar Thomas out to the 48 they're going to mark him down now he's about a yard and a half short of the first down it's crutchfield number 24 defensively tony is a senior from pasadena california we talked back in the first half about that arthritic knee and the fact that he went down in practice on thursday and well edwards was really kind of making a, a grimace over that he knew he had to have him Spins off one tackler, and I don't know. That second effort is close, but Rick Wilson had him in his grasp, and from where they've spotted it, he's not going to have the first down. It Shad was Hanson also. Pardon me. Again. Yeah, you're right. It was Rick Wilson. He's had a great game coming off the bench right here. He's the strongest player, strongest player on the BYU team, and he beats the center. You can see him submarine, get through, get some defensive uh, penetration, and uh, there's no, no running when you don't have room to get by to the line of scrimmage. Miami will go for it on fourth down. So you look and listen. around the 50-yard line, and it, it just depends on where they say he went out. From where they have spotted it, he is across the 50. That is a Keynes first down. It wasn't easy, though. <laughs> it's not like they're just blowing him off the ball, which is He's a big fear here. That's a tough call for the official right there. He's trying to get out of the way, but also see what happens on the plane exactly where the youngster goes over the sideline mark. You know, we've talked about how tired the Miami defense is, but it looks like this Miami offensive line is sucking a little wind, too. Maybe it is the atmosphere is having a little bit more effect. Than altitude. We, altitude yeah. is having a little bit more effect than we thought. 
Erickson going to take off on this one and slides home at the 43. Now they're going to mark him down at the 44. So let's look at the storyline in this one with 13-15 remaining in the ball game. Detmer, 372 yards, three touchdowns. Erickson, 20 of 35, 195 yards. Miami, two TDs off takeaways. Bellini, 10 receptions, 111 yards, and one touchdown. And remember, BYU has four turnovers in the ball game. Alex Johnson hit down in the backfield and it's Levitt. Levitt and Capusi have had a game over there just pinching in, not letting that uh, the running game get started over there. Jared Levitt, is, he's just been able to stuff that play all day. Well, they've had, they keep getting new heroes with each quarter. Capusi <laughs> in the last one, Fatissimano uh, back in the first half. Johnson, six carries now, 53 yards. Miami needs just inside the 40. Has him open complete, Lamar Thomas. And to say he is out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Now Erickson showing some of his ice water. Craig stands in here reading right now, makes the proper read. He goes to the guy who's single covered, stands, follows through, keeps his head steady, puts a little bit of air under it, and throws it into a spot where just he can catch the ball. Great play on the third and six. Well, look how long Thomas's legs are. <laughs> we said he's 6'3, only 170 pounds. Lamar Thomas had a great game so far. Seven catches, 88 yards. Conley, the lone setback. They fake to him, throw over the middle, and that's Darrell Spencer complete down around the 15. Good for another first down. Gray holding on for dear life. Nice play by Craig here. He had Rocky Beagle coming in on him in the blitz. He faked the little play action pass and delivered it right on the money. I'll tell you, our toughest task may be tonight <laughs> the Visa players of the game. We've got to pick a couple here, and we will do at the end of the <laughs> ballgame. I say it's tough. There have been a lot of heroes, but of course, a couple of guys have distinguished themselves early on. Craig fumbles the snap on the ground. They still scramble for it at the 16. BYU says they have the ball, but the officials have not signaled as yet. That's the second snap they fumbled. And the coaches say those are automatic, but it still takes practice. Remember, this is by Miami's first game of the year. Levitt's got his mind made up. <laughs> the officials can't get the players off the players on the bottom. And you see the official right down there with them. BYU football. LaBelle, you recovered it. He, he looked like they hit from it. <laughs> there you see the snap right there. It's impossible to tell. You know, is it the center's fault, the quarterback's fault? It really doesn't matter. The ball's laying on the ground. Everybody's fighting for it, and they get it. Timeout, 28-21. Cougars. College football Saturday, Miami at BYU, is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one Jeep. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson with 11.30 to play in the ballgame. BYU 28-21. And the Hurricanes with a huge mistake as the young running back tried to pick it up rather than making the recovery. And after this play, we'll go back and show you. Draw play, Salido. As the official goes tumbling back downfield, his flag came out, but I don't, I, I don't think he was throwing it because of a foul. Let's go back and look at that fumble again. 
sometimes a particular play causes it. Look at the center. He has to reach real far on that block. It's the same play that they fumbled the last snap. Remember the guard came. We thought he might be have knocked it out of Craig's hands, and then you saw the running back try to pick it up and run. Conley tried to pick it up as you look at Craig on the sideline. It's twice, so it's been kicked by the guard as they were pulling. They kicked by one of the offensive linemen. Detmer and will not get away this time. 45 Darren Smith will take him down. And it's going to be third down at the Cougars need just across the 25 yard line. And Curry was the man who was coming with the pressure and Shane forced him up into the pocket. A lot of pride on that Miami defense Maurice Crum. I mean he's led the team in tackles the last two years. This is a defense that was number one in the nation last year and they're holding out for dear life. They've got to make something turnover or something big happen and take tie out of his game. Looking for Smith this tight end overthrown. Farms was there covering. And quickly let's go to Chris Fowler for another update. Okay fellas the BYU trying to hang on their rivals. Utah have been caught in the Metrodome. Markel to Marcus. Fleetwood to Evans, a three-yard touchdown. The Gophers then converted a two-point conversion. It's now tied 29-29. Minnesota and Utah, they've just started the fourth quarter. Back to Provo. Only the third kick tonight for Kaufman. His first two, he's averaged 51 yards of boot. This is a line drive. But Carroll retreating. Cuts back at the 23. Twenty-eight twenty-one with nine fifty-five to play. Well, the Miami Hurricanes looking it over from the close side of the field before a packed house of over sixty-six thousand here in Provo. Take a look at Russell Maryland right here. Brian May on the block sticks his hands out. Russell been rushing all night, pushes him over the pile. He's just dead tired. He's lost his quickness. Makes it to Conley. Oh, he had his man open, and he is going to be sacked by Mark Smith. I mean to tell you, Wesley Carroll had broken free by 10 yards, cutting to the far side of the field, and the pressure got him. Same play that he overthrew a little earlier in the, in the half, where he, he just didn't put enough air on it. He had him just as wide open this time, but of course didn't have the time. There you see the play action pass. By the time he turns around and looks for his receiver, he doesn't have a chance. He's just got to get out of the way. Big sack there. I mean, that changes the scoreboard if they don't get that I start sack. to say, big sack. We got a 28-28 ball game. <laughs> Second sack of the night by BYU. Craig running for his life. He is beyond the line of scrimmage. Throws it incomplete. No marker has come down yet, but that'll be a loss of down. There it is. Kafusi was pressuring. But they will lose down and distance on this one. Illegal forward pass. It's too bad here. Craig makes a nice play. Look at he comes back. He's got some pressure on him. But well, we see how open Chudzinski is right there on the opposite side. But Craig's going to scramble out. And he's trying to make just a little bit too much. Just doesn't make a very good throw on the run right there. He avoided two potential sacks and made the play, but just didn't deliver it very accurately. Now Gary with the penalty. The ball has been pushed back just inside the 22. As we said, it's a loss of down, so it's third. And the line to make is out at the 45-yard line. That's the eighth penalty against the Hurricanes for 55 yards. All four of their receivers, if they do what they do before, will go up the field, up the hashes, look at the lead to free safety. Over the middle, looking for Carroll, incomplete. Well, that down marker just changed to four. Paul Snyder again will have to come in as Bellini drops off. Almost blocked the punt. 
the lead with a fair catch at the 48. 29 yards on the punt. Eight minutes, 54 seconds left to play. Cougars by seven. Well, that's our Thursday night special this week out of the South Plain, Texas Tech, who was beaten on a late kick return by Ohio State today, 17-10, taking on the Houston Cougars, who were winning big over UNLV at last report. Detmer, Nyberg, and a marker from deep downfield at the 39 as Armstead comes up defensively. I think they're going to get called for a pick here for the first time. They rubbed off. That's the call, Gary. Yep. Offensive pass interference on the pick. See if you can uh, get kinda, it here. It's easy to see up here. Watch. They run out and they cut in between. And they kind of get lost in, in there. That's what happens. If you run at that defensive back and he runs into you at all, they're going to call a pick all the time because I tell you, right on that sideline, the referee that, that called that, the official that called that, was right on the Miami sideline. You know he got some help on that call. <laughs> Dennis Erickson is teamed down by 7, 28-21. We have 8.50 left to play. But now with the penalty, the new line of scrimmage is the 33-yard line, and BYU has to go across midfield to Miami's 42. away from a couple has Smith fumbles the ball and Miami recovers at the 47. And they're going to tack 15 yards on top of this too. Five turnovers against the Cougars and then the late flag that came in one interception and four fumbles. Here you see it into the rush. They're going to run the quick bootleg tie with the quick feet. Gets under it right here. Finds Smith coming across. He's got it. Big hit from behind. Daryl Williams with the big hit. There it is. It's right. Oh, boy, that's close. I'll tell you. That is close. I can see. You can see why. A little bit of argument on that one. That's a big play right there. Miami following takeaways, two scores, four possessions, I think not both touchdowns. Yeah, the question would be that Lavelle Edwards' staff will look at and say if he came down on the sideline right. that it That's should have been uh, BYU's football. Last person to have possession with right. the ball. Yep. I mean, if you'd have told me that BYU was going to turn the ball over this many times and still be winning 28-21. I'd say, uh, what game are you watching? Rick Wilson will make the play defensively. Conley looking for some room as he continued to slide to the outside. Take another look at it. It is on the field of play, but now watch the recovery. Watch his right arm. Nope, he's on the field of play. Depth of perception there, depth perception, made it look as though he came down out of bounds, but I believe the elbow was just inside and the official was lined up with it. Well, he was right on the play. Let's give him credit for that. I mean, yeah. he, he saw what he saw, and there's no going back. Erickson almost intercepted by Levin. He wanted Bethel. Bethel had tripped on the defensive back and was stumbling at the 30. Well, obviously, Craig read the blitz right there. He audible to a little short pass to his tight end. There you see Miami's last four possessions. Six Losing plays, it. eight plays, 12, and then the, the four-play drive. Losing 12 yards on that one. When they had the illegal pass by Craig on that one. On third down, he's got him, but he will not have the first down. Oh, what a hit by Brian Mitchell. Well, let's give Craig uh, some credit here. He threw this one right in the face of a blitz. 
And we're going to have a, a shot of it right here. You see the guy coming off the corner. He throws it right there on the money. Now with a big hit coming up. Oh, that's the way to stop him, keep him short. Ryan Mitchell lays it on him. You almost have to go for it here right now. You can't give the ball back to tie with seven minutes to go. Well, they need three yards. It is fourth down. I, they almost have to run it the way they've been having trouble. I mean, they almost have to pass it the way they've been having trouble running the ball here, too. Has it to Chetzinski. Has the first down plus ten. Norm Dixon shoves him out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you. That was a gutsy call by Coach Erickson. Of course, it was the execution by Craig, but that was a, a naked bootleg. The tight end slams down and comes out into the flat. I mean, that's an all-or-nothing call right there. Chetzinski. Here you see it. He slams down, comes out. Chet is out there by himself. The big play. He left it trying to cover on the play, and Chetzinski just left him. From the 13, first down, Hurricanes. They trail by seven. Overthrown, Wesley Carroll is the man he wanted. Well, they do a lot with Wesley Carroll, and the fact that he does so many things. He doesn't mind going across the middle. He loves to block. Hard-nosed wide receiver, and yet he's not that big at 6'185". Uh, well, he's a good target. It's, it's nice to have that height out there as a quarterback. I know that, but uh, you know, he just throwing the ball a little bit high. Let us follow through. One more little instant. Stay with the pass. Erickson. Had his man overthrown. Lamar Thomas, who was the leaper, and when I say he had his man in defense of Craig Erickson, there were two BYU defenders there, and he was depending on Thomas's leaping ability. Thomas is still down over there and uh, might have got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. There you see it. He's going to come right out to the sideline, right there by the flag in the corner of the end zone. Give me the ball. Boy, he is up there. Yep. Good heavens. That would have been interesting had he caught it. His left foot came down in the cone. That would have been a touch. Well, if he was pushed out like that, they yep. would have given him the touchdown. Third down. Conley, the setback. Intercepted by Lee. Junior from Navasota, Texas. His father played basketball at Prairie View, and he took the pass away from the receiver. It was a gamble right here. He has to lay it up. He's got everybody coming. He tries to put it up top, gives a chance for three, and Lee just picks it before it falls on the ground right there. That can't be too easy on the coach. Here he comes. He's hugging him. That's a way to go, baby. <laughs> Detmer straight ahead with the running play of Salido. We have six minutes and 22 seconds left in the ball game. BYU continues to lead by seven points. And against the Miami ball club, that's a slim lead. I'll tell you, there's 66,000 people here, and they have one eye on the clock and one on the game right now. They're just counting it down. Six minutes to go. They can smell it. An upset. This place will go bananas. Boyce will have three, maybe four yards. Darrell Williams from his free safety position comes over very quickly to make the hit. Nick was made by Roland Smith at number 31, Darrell Williams. You remember this graphic we showed you off the top. The last two preseason number one teams, Florida State and Michigan in 88 and 89, lost their opening games. Dennis Erickson hoping and praying that he does not make it three years in a row that that has happened. Very tough to start out the year preseason number one and win it all the way through. No team has ever gone undefeated in starting out preseason number one. Pressure from the outside. Decker gets it away, and how he got it away, I'm not sure. Smith 
was the man he wanted but Darren Smith the sophomore out of Miami Florida was pressuring from the right side and Kaufman who has been a real unsung hero in this ballgame as you look at it one more time Kaufman into punt you can see how fast he stops and gets rid of the ball I mean it's unbelievable how fast he can get rid of the ball 52.3 his average and three punch plus his kickoffs too they haven't no even returns. had a kickoff return all night a driving spiral again Carroll back to the 13 needed one oh. block and oh my goodness he oh. sent airborne by number 31 Brad Clark 58 yards on that kick by Coffin. Carroll also is catching those those punts going away. Here you see him. He's running full speed. And you got to understand, after Clark, there are not many blue jerseys. Whoa. Clark has had a great special teams night. That's, I believe, his third tackle. Catches him right in the hip. Like we well, the season premiere of NFL Game Day. Don't forget the new time at 12 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. And then the wrap up. One hour of NFL Prime Time tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, right here on ESPN with our award winning crew. Five minutes left to play. One of the officials is down, and in fact, that's the reason for the stoppage in play. You can see the gentleman has a bloody nose. He's right on the sideline. The tackle gets it driven right to him. I think maybe Carroll you know caught him with his foot. With I think he got foot. kicked in the I face. Think when yeah. he got spun around, he got caught right in the foot. I'll tell you what. Well, we've had, he might be missing a couple teeth right there. You know, last week we had the gentleman carrying the, the yard marker at Nebraska, Mr. Hester, who got uh, belted. Let's see if it was his foot as he gets hit and spun. He's watching the play. See when he goes out of bounds. Still not quite in your vision. But I really think it was. One more look. Let's see if we got it this time, guys. Coming to the sideline. He gets spun around. Foot right That's in the happened. mouth. Great shot, guys. Got him. A little bit of blood. Maybe missing a few teeth. I'll tell you, these guys, they might start wearing mouthpieces next year. Twenty-eight, twenty-one. BYU. Five minutes left to play. Denver on the sideline. You see his chin is bandaged. We never did get a, a number of how many stitches or whether they just put a clamp on there, but he had his chin opened up in the first hand. Well, we're also to the point right now in the game that if Miami does go down the, the, the field and score, I mean, they're almost going to have to go for two points. They're not going to be able to, to, to just kick a field goal and come out of here 28-28 and give Ty a chance to put a field goal on and win the game. I'll, I'll say they'll Still go for the first two. Game of the year. I'll say they'll go for two. Erickson lets it fly and has Lamar Thomas across midfield down to the 45-yard line. Josh Arnold made the tackle on it. That one was perfect. Well, that's what Dennis Erickson loves about Craig Erickson. He tells him he's the toughest a competitor he's ever had as a quarterback, calls him the best quarterback he's ever had. Finally, the Miami receivers are spreading out, running down the field a little bit, caught the BYU defense a little bit on their heels, used to all those little short options. Lamar Thomas, eight catches, 103 yards. Over the middle, incomplete, no marker, and he wanted 93, Randy Bethel. And his play by Norman Dixon right there, coming up to break that one up. Norman, a senior from New Orleans. Watch how closely he is protecting on this play. You see Bethel looking, sticking his hand up. A lot of quarterbacks, they, they, don't, they don't like when they do that. That was probably a, a hot read again. The linebackers came, the, the receiver doesn't need to put his hand up. You, you're reading it, you can deliver the ball to him. Gets it out. Carroll caught in the open field by Josh Arnold.
Folks, what you got to understand is these receivers, those are good one-on-one -on -one tackles because beyond Arnold, he had another five or ten yards anyway. I really thought that was going to be the key to the game tonight is how well BYU tackled in the secondary because these uh, Miami receivers catch the ball and get big yardage. But, and, we, and they talked a little bit about having trouble tackling early in the year a little bit. Defensive coordinator Ken Schmidt was telling us. So they've done the job all night. Erickson calls timeout on the third down play with seven to go, so we'll take it with him. 3.48 remaining, BYU by seven. BYU by seven points, 3.48 to play, and the situation, the BYU defense on the field right now, and the Kings scrimmaging from their 42-yard line. They've also burned two of their timeouts, so this is just about it. They have to score on this drive for Miami. Hurricanes with one left. Third down. Drills it. Overthrown. Hill was the intended receiver. That's at least eight passes, seven, eight passes tonight that Craig has thrown the ball too high. It looks to me like he's making his mind up a little bit too late. He wanted to throw the ball to the outside, and he's coming back to a second receiver without the proper footwork that he, that he needs to get ready and set to throw the ball. And he said he throws the ball as well as anybody out there. Fourth down, and I think this crowd will let you know if Miami picks it up or not. Thomas on the near sideline. That is a first down Miami at the 31. Oh, my goodness. I love it. Way to go, Craig. Nice job. Fourth down pass. All the pressure's on you. You know, as a quarterback, you got to be willing to step up and take the challenge at that time. You just threw one over somebody's head. They call it on fourth down and to deliver a strike. Great That's job, Craig. Lamar Thomas, nine catches now, 115 yards. Erickson dumps it off. McGuire can't hold on. It's probably a good thing. He would have lost about eight yards in the play. Dennis Erickson looks up at the scoreboard clock, which shows three minutes, 20 seconds. Going to be a second down for the Hurricanes. The line to make for the first down is the BYU 21. Over the middle, and it is caught at the 23. The tie will go to the receiver, and that's Tom Lamar Thomas. Can't be an interception when you got a tie. Beagle is the man who was trying to take it away from him. This is another great throw by Craig right here. He's basically covered. Watch Beagle switch. He was covering one guy. He turns back. That's great defense by Beagle. Give the defensive coaches some credit also because that's a great disguise. When Craig threw that ball, he had no idea Beagle was going to be involved in it. That's what. That's the nightmare of playing quarterback. You think you got a guy wide open to throw it, and it's gone. Hit in the backfield, and Kafusi is there to knock him down at the 25. It'll be fourth down and about four to pick up the first. The last two fourth down plays, Craig has ran the little naked boot one time where he hit Chudzinski on, on the little peak pass, and he threw the fourth down out to the flat. Now, what does he get to dial this time? Can he do the magic again? He needs about six yards. Well, actually, it's about four because it's oh, four at the yards. 25 sorry, and right. they need to go to the 21. Miami is three of four on fourth down conversions. He's going to go for incomplete knockdown by Urban Lee. Randall Hill was the man he wanted.
There you see it. Urban Lee with a good Urban set of Lee. hands. He took one pass away earlier in the end zone with one hand and watch him do this. Oh, he still the ball. Had the Hill reception. Hill almost had it. Yeah. I mean, that's a that, that's a big risk that Craig took right there, but it was worth the risk, I guess. He didn't have anybody else open. He had to let it go. They had the blitz on him. BYU keeps it on the ground. Tui Pelotu goes for one. Remember, they only have one timeout right now, so one first down and the ball game's over. There you see him. He's telling him that right now, too. Ty's telling him, one first down and it's ours. Detmer hit as he throws the ball incomplete. It'll now be third down. It was Jesse Armstead coming from the backside with the pressure from Miami. Whoa. Hit somebody's arm and get a, get a free six. <laughs> Boy, you just read my mind because that's what my thought was when I saw him coming. That Ty, get rid of this ball. This could be a big fumble right here. One second earlier, tenth of a second earlier, that ball could be flopping on the ground. I like that though. They're going to win. They're trying to win the game. They're not going to try to run it up in the line and punt it. They're going to try to win it on offense. Detmer has voice for the first down at the 37. I think now you've got to say that Ty is the leading candidate for the Heisman. I don't think he's even thinking about that right now, but he really put himself in the driver's spot. Right now, he is top gun tonight. He's the Tom Cruise of college football. He's Mr. Top Gun. Clock runs down. This baby's over. Miami does have one timeout left. As Detmer lets the 25 second clock go all the way down to one and then he'll fall on one knee. Miami can stop it only one more time. And they do. Timeout called for the Hurricanes. Now look at Detmer's numbers. 537 against Washington State. Penn State in the bowl game, the holiday bowl out in San Diego, 576. And tonight, 406 yards. And I think the key stat there, the other two were in losses. When you're trying to play from behind, you're going to get some yardage, you know, some garbage yardage. Tonight, there was no garbage yards. He earned every one of them. I, I think back to that story that Lavelle was telling us how he recruited, recruited him. I mean, uh, here's a guy nobody wanted. Well, tonight's Visa players of the game are from the university or Brigham Young University. Let's make it Miami first. Lamar Thomas. And from BYU, Ty Detmer. And as part of their continued effort to further the development of amateur athletics visa, proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Ty Detmer for BYU and Lamar Thomas for the Miami Hurricanes. Well, they cannot stop it again. Under 25 seconds when the play ended. And let's let the crowd count it down for you. Erickson and Lavelle Edwards in the middle of the field someplace and how they got to find each other I don't know here you see Mike Sullivan the All-American
started every game in his career. Hasn't lost too many. Well, we talked earlier today about a mighty celebration in Charlottesville later or earlier today. My friends, I think Provo, Utah might see the dawn with half the population still up. The kicking game, we got to give Kaufman a world of credit. He kept Miami on their heel. But Ty Detmer, as you said, top gun tonight. Well, I think Ty Detmer is now going to take his mark right in there with uh, fellows like Doug Flutie, uh, Bernie Kozar in his big game, his big win over Nebraska, all the greats in college football. You're now going to mention Ty Detmer in this big upset that he engineered tonight. I've never seen anybody play as competitively as he did the whole game. Our final score, Brigham Young 28, Miami 21. And now for Gary Danielson and all of us here at ESPN, this is Ron Franklin saying so long, everybody, from Provo, Utah.